Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to episode 24 of the Sharp Shooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinska Shaw, aka Mr. B Sharp, on the ones and twos and the threes and the fours. We're missing two of the guys tonight. Shout out to Arlon, shout out to Quint. Hopefully, we'll see them on next week. But we got some people in here, they already been on the show, some friends of the show. <laughs> So we're going to bring up the guys tonight. Yeah. You see him, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to my partner, Ted. What up with your pimp? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. You see he got on that Matt Dow hat. You don't know <laughs> something wrong with you. I can't be friends with you. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's my boy. It's the franchise. With the Elijah one jersey. <laughs> Mr. Haven Moore. What up, hey, player? It's town's finest. I ain't going to say what I want to say because the man got a good job. <laughs> good job. <laughs> He's a good man, Savannah. A good man. <laughs> and my player, Pimp. With this Georgia scully on, I don't know why he need to take it <laughs> off, burn it right now, and throw it. Uh, do whatever, man. Just burn it. <laughs> My dog Josh, what's going on, dog? What's up, man? What's up? Had to rep the dogs tonight. <laughs> yeah, you could have you could have rep any type of dog, <laughs> any, and I mean literally any type of dog. Pit, <laughs> pit bull, <laughs> rock roller. Q dog, any type of dog, but that damn dog. <laughs> but it's all good. Shout out to shout out to the boy. But it's still roll tight. Don't get it confused. F Auburn too and Test. Just want to throw that out there because everybody on here got different teams. But we ain't here to talk about that tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We are here to talk about Super Bowl Fifty Eight recap, and you already know what went down. Oh, uh, one up easily before uh, they even put it out there. The highest televised Super Bowl game of all time. I think a little bit of that, well, well, a little bit of help was from them uh, Taylor Swift fans because they just wanted to get a glimpse because they knew if Travis caught the ball, they're going to put the camera up there, put the camera up there. But, of course, uh, the Chiefs pulled it off. In overtime on a game-winning drive by Pat Mahomes and the boys to Miko Hardman. What's y'all thoughts on the Super Bowl? Anybody can go. It don't matter. Well, I, I, I'm going to say this last little part because I forgot. Tez is a 49ers fan. So I know what his thoughts are. So you know <laughs> what? It's only right that he goes first. So... Sir, you go ahead. Oh, man. Uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. <laughs> I didn't enjoy any part any part of the game. None of it. The entire broadcast was trash, start to finish. <laughs> uh, but, nah, seriously, man. Uh, honestly, this is kind of – it's kind of the game I expected. Uh, Chiefs got – you know, the championship DNA will always show up. Um, they they clearly know how to win big games, close games like this. Um, it's just one of those things in the first half. I don't know if anybody followed me on Facebook. In the first half, at the halftime, it's like 10-3. I, I posted on Facebook, like, it's not enough. I didn't feel comfortable about it. Um, I knew that Steve Spagnolia would adjust, which he did. We were moving the ball on the ground pretty easily in the first half. In the second half, he made those adjustments. The run got bottled up. Um, and he just feels a sneaky good defense, man, all the time. They never – they don't make a lot of flash plays, but they get tons of three and outs. Uh, they control the game, and they give their quarterback a chance uh, to win. Honestly, from the 49ers standpoint, I can't point to anything that – that maybe we could have done better. Like, I was satisfied with the play calling. 
Uh, of course, we could have held on to the ball. Um, that Christian McCaffrey fumble definitely hurt. Uh, I think he only fumbled three times the entire year, so that hurt. Then you come back and you get two penalties on Trent Williams back to back, taking us out of field goal range. That usually doesn't happen. And then the fumble on the punt, man, that was just like a killer. Get him the ball right there, they score. Uh, there's some questionable things. If I had to question one thing about uh, 49ers, about my team, it would be why on earth did we take the ball first in overtime? I didn't understand that. I didn't understand the logic behind that. I guess they said they didn't know the rules. I don't know. Uh, seems like we've been the same rules for the longest. That sounds like an excuse. But, uh, yeah, to, to, to take the ball first and then – to give up the game winning touchdown on the exact same play they won the Super Bowl with last year to Kadarius Tony. I mean, ah, this is a tough one, man. This is a tough one. Uh, that's pretty much all I got to say about it, man. I don't really want to talk about this. <laughs> good, man. This we, ain't gonna be on it. we ain't going to be on it too long, man. It's all good. I, but it had to be done. This is my thoughts on the Super Bowl, man. Hands down, one of the best Super Bowls I watched uh, probably ever. I've seen a lot of good great Super Bowls in the past few years. I'm not gonna lie, but this Super Bowl was a crazy, crazy defensive matchup. Both defenses did what they were supposed to do. They shut down the running game. It was so crazy. Like if you think about it and you look at the stats, Pat Mahomes had more rushing yards than Pancheco. If I'm not mistaken, I think he did. And he made the plays he was supposed to make in the air and on the ground. It was insane, man. Um, The defense put on a display that we we haven't seen this type of two Super Bowl teams play to that caliber of defense, man. And wow. It wasn't, you know, as bad as we wanted to shoot out. You know what I'm saying? Even, hey, San Fran made some crazy plays, man. You know, Jennings, that's the name, Jennings, Juwan. Jennings. Yeah. Dude, dude, him throwing that touchdown pass is insane, man. You know, to see that in the Super Bowl was just crazy. Uh, but I knew, I knew, man, when they went into overtime, bro, you do not, you do not, one guy you do not want to see in overtime is Mr. Patty Mahomes. You know what I'm saying? My homie did what he had to do, man. And that last drive, man, like that last play, bro, that was something like off of Madden, dog. That was like, like for real. Dude pressed the wide triangle button, made, made dude run off to the right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you toss it up real quick. That was a Madden play, bro. It was just insane. But um, it was unfortunate for the 49er fans, bro. That would have broke my heart if I was a 49er fan, dog, to go out like that. And uh, you're right. For them to to choose to get the ball first and not rely on that defense to make that stop, see, that would have been a totally different situation had the Chiefs had to come out first. I think so. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. But, dude, just <sighs> Mahomes, dog. He, he, it's Mahomes, dog. Like, you know what I mean? This is the next, the next Brady, dude. He's, like, going to be the closest thing to Brady if he does not surpass Brady. In one day, you know what I mean. This this team, they've shown it. Uh, I know it was a lot of confusion, not confusion, but it was a lot of people feeling like Tyreek was one of the main reasons why uh, Pat Mahomes was so successful in uh, some of them years. And they've shown uh, that they can win without a superstar. They've done it. They're doing it. They took a mediocre Chiefs team to the Super Bowl and won it against, on paper, one of the best 49er offenses that we've seen in a long time, man. The 49ers were stacked all across the board on offense and defense. Outside of Brock Purdy, which, you know, we can go there. Brock Brock did what he he was supposed to do. Um, He didn't even throw a pick. He just didn't put it in the end zone enough. You know what I'm saying? But... But, you know, Mahomes put up two touchdowns, man, had one pick. 
had over 333 uh, passing yards, uh, led the team in rushing, which I, I did not see that coming. I thought Pancheco was going to uh, – going to ball out in the Super Bowl, and he he almost cost them the Super Bowl with them fumbles that he was uh, committing. But, you know, like McCaffrey had a fumble too. So it's just it, – it was a very good game, bro. The defense, you know, defense won the championships. And uh, KC came out and ball, man. They did what they were supposed to do. But no, no disrespect to the 49ers, man. They did what they were supposed to do too, man, but just – Hey, when you got you got Mahomes out there, man, that guy is is something different, dog. It don't matter who you put around. We could have been his receivers that game, the way that he came out and, and did what he was supposed to do. So, uh, much big shout outs to KC. Big shout out to my KC fam. Major shout out to Terry Braddon, man, Junior, man. Major shout out to my boy. You know what I'm saying? That that dude, that dude got rings, bro. He got rings. This is number three. So come on, man, three rings. Skiggy one, you feel me? <laughs> Real talk. So that's all I got to say about that one, man. Really good Super Bowl. And Usher did his thug too, man. We, I know we're going to get to that in a little bit. But, yeah, yeah big shout-outs, man. It was a fun Super Bowl to watch. Definitely kept us on our toes. Let's see, on you. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I definitely agree with you, uh, DJ, man. Like, that was one of the most entertaining Super Bowls that we've seen in a long time. Um, just the, um, you know, the defense that was in the first half, you know, San Francisco only allowed three points the first half. It was 10 to three at halftime. And I knew it wasn't going to be a shot, a, a shootout because really both defense has been playing. Defenses have been playing, you know, fairly well in the playoffs. You know, the 49ers kind of took a step back in the playoffs, but the regular season defense was obviously phenomenal. And then the uh, Chiefs defense has late, lately, the last couple of years, have stepped up in the playoffs. And so um, that, was, it was, that was really, you know, exciting to see, you know, because, you know, a lot of offense, a lot of the NFL now is just offense, 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 and you don't really see a whole bunch of defense. And so just to see that in the first half was good. Of course, both offenses got going. Offense coordinators made adjustments, started attacking defense, the each opposing defense in different ways. Um, the 49ers did force interception from Patrick Mahomes. Um, and so, you know, the, the, but 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 he still, you know, did his thing when it counted and when it when it mattered in the fourth quarter. Um, and so, you know, him having 333 passing yards, 66, Patrick Mahomes had 66 rushing yards. Led the team in rushing while Pacheco had 59. Um, and um, you know, um, Patrick Mahomes had nine rushing attempts as well. <clears throat> and so it was just, it was like, wow, because that that's one thing that if I didn't really, if nothing else caught my eye in the Super Bowl, it was that Patrick Mahomes actually had speed. Like we knew he was mobile, we knew he could scramble, we knew he could. Uh, you know, finesse and, you know, use his legs when you needed to. But this dude was actually looking fast. Like, he was looking like he had some legit speed on Sunday night, like some speed that we had not seen out of him. Like, I'm like, has he gotten faster? Because um, he's only 28. <clears throat> and so it's like, you know, he's still, obviously, he's in his prime, you know, and stuff like that. And so, mate, like, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Daniel Jones, you know, they may, you know, be faster than um faster than um Patrick Mahomes is, but he's he's up there. He's up there as far as speed. And so um just a very, you know, very polished game, obviously, from him. You could tell that championship DNA that like Taylor was talking about, about that championship DNA he has. And I think another thing that people need to realize now is like how Brady had Belichick, Patrick Mahomes has Andy Reid. That combination is lethal obviously as we can see like because i mean they were <clears throat> they're really a couple uh you know in 2020 they didn't have any offense alignment so patrick couldn't get going then in 2018 patrick's first mvp year he actually uh was a offside d4 being offsides away from potentially having another ring because they would have played the Rams that year and so this dude could have four or five rings by now you know what i'm saying if a couple of things uh would have went differently and so um i mean just every they were counted out they didn't have any receivers. That was the whole narrative. And so for them to overcome that and still win a ring against a legit defense who had all their weapons, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayu, and George Kittle only had two catches for four yards. 
that's on Kyle Shanahan. I know, Tez, you are absolutely ticked off about that because there's absolutely no way one of the best tight ends in the game, George Kittle is probably a top three tight end, Andrews and Kelsey, that's it, like, then him. So it's like, for him to only have two catches, there's something going on in this game. Christian McCaffrey had 30 touches, and so that was good. He had about 23 rushes, and so he was used, you know, pretty well. But, I mean, you got to get your tight end involved. You've got to. They make a big difference. So they're not doing that hurt them. The fumbles was absolute killer with Christian in the beginning. And then that muff punt, I mean, that's really what did it. That's really what shifted the momentum. If there was not – that muff punt did not occur, then, you know, San Francisco could have got a ball, put more points on the board, and now they could have more played more clock control because they would have probably had a bigger lead <clears throat> in the fourth quarter. And so – um, poor execution um, on Shanahan's part with the tight end. And Kansas City has benefited all playoffs on, on the opposing team's mistakes. Uh, the Ravens turned the ball over three times in the AFC Championship. The Bills missed a field goal. They had, I believe, a turnover as well. And so Kansas City always capitalizes on other teams' mistakes. It's like high against Brady, you, you couldn't turn the ball over. That's how it is with Patrick. If you turn the ball over, you are going to probably lose the game because they're always capitalizing off turnovers, always, always. And so, I mean, so it, like I said, it was great. Back-to-back -back champs, I mean, just did not see that. Um, you know, you know, it, it, teams know how to attack more of the Chiefs now. But, you know, I, I was very pleased. I was going for the 49ers because – they're turning Patrick Mahomes into this Tom Brady. I didn't like Tom Brady. So I was going for the 49ers. Um, but I don't hate the Chiefs, so I, you know, wasn't too mad at it. So yeah. It's already some Tom Brady hate. You can't hate the goat, man. You can't hate the goat, man. So <laughs> it's crazy, I, though. I, go ahead. The Chiefs made a, a really, really gutsy call by not playing Kadarius Tom in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Which I'm glad I'm glad they did that because dude would have been a liability on that squad, man, for the Super Bowl, man. Mm -hmm. We would have seen way more drops. They, they I, think once, I think huh? once they got Miko Harmon in the building, Kadarius Tony was pretty much done at that point. It was all it was all deep for him. It was all deep for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the one thing, like we giving Pat Mahomes a lot of credit. And I, I would give him um, a grade off the Super Bowl. I think with that last drive, I'd give him an A, a minus for the most part because he was just playing hot garbage in that first quarter, well, first half. But, of course, that was the defense. But he, he lit it up uh, in the second half in overtime. The thing that we're not giving credit to is that Kansas City Chiefs defense, which a lot of folks do not give it to. That is a elite defense that has been helping them out. If you watch any playoff game throughout the whole playoff, take the offense pretty much been average all year. That's why I say Airbnb is a, like a big part of why that offense was like, what well, Bay Pat Mahomes, Pat Mahomes. We know Pat Mahomes now. But it really put him up there with uh, Airbnb me offense. I still believe that now. But uh, that defense with uh, Steve Spadnola, just, just legendary, man. I'm talking about the man. He's a great defensive coordinator. And I, they was trying to give him the best defensive coordinator ever. I, I can – I wouldn't – he has more rings. Best defensive <coughs> coordinator ever. I still go with Dick LeBeau with them Steelers teams and Bill Belichick with them uh, old Giants uh, defenses and Buddy Ryan with the Bears. It's, it's some guys, how about to say. But he he definitely has an argument to consider himself the best. So if they say he's the best, I, I won't argue it for the most part. But those guys are the reason. They need more praise because – Chris Jones saved two touchdowns, two major touchdowns. And they I don't like how uh, a lot of analysts was trying to uh, put that on Brock Purdy, like he overthrew them just on purpose. Like he just sat back there and just <clears throat> overthrew them. Like, no, the second he said height, <coughs> both is in his face, and you expect him to throw a dime, it's, it's not too many quarterbacks 
Not even Pat Mahomes can do that. You know, I'm talking about immediately after you say hype. He saved two touchdowns. So Chris Jones is definitely, I believe, should have been uh, the MVP of the Super Bowl. Not because of that, because of the way he disrupted the game that saved those boys. But, uh, yeah, the 49ers couldn't do any more than what they could have done. I believe the only is certain plays I did not like that they did that when it was third and seven, they called cover zero and they just went all out and trying to get Pat Mahomes at that time. I was like, I didn't like that play. If you were going to do that, I wish you did it on that fourth down play. Mm-hmm. If you were going to do it on any other play, but mm-hmm. they did it on third and seven, which I, I, I was pissed off. And then they tried to do it again. And, uh, Shanahan <laughs> called timeout because he didn't want to see that again. I don't blame, him. but <laughs> shot. Shout out to the Chiefs, uh, two-time uh, champions. Now, this question. is where – huh? I was about to say, I got a question. I don't know where you go was ahead. about to go. go no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> are, are we in the middle of a Chiefs dynasty right now? Yeah. We got three yeah. three Super Bowls in five years. Five years, yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You got to uh, call it a dynasty if you're doing that right now. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm about to say – uh, until somebody uh take him. now the thing is with him it's going to be very very interesting when joe burrow is healthy that's why i say all it takes is joe burrow to really just have a uh offensive line because i know pat mahomes struggle against them Bengals team when mm-hmm. uh joe burrow's on the other side if joe burrow gets any type of offensive line it's going to be scary in the nfl <laughs> So we gonna see, man. Uh, but this this is their time right now. Uh, Andy just pushed himself up higher on the Mount Rushmore of co- now nah, about to say college coaches of uh NFL coaches of all time. I believe he's at number two. I think he's at number two two right now. Matter of fact, no, nah, I wouldn't even put him at two right now. I'll put him at um, Chuck. No, it still got to be two. For me with him for a Super Bowl. I'll put him in three or four, but he's definitely up there. He really submitted himself top as five a uh, sure. huh? Top five for sure. You ain't putting him at four or higher? I mean, man. It's, it ain't too I many mean, coaches, man, they got a resume that Andy Reid had. And the, it's just true. the success. The success that he been doing like it started with with the 49ers just being lower tier guy then being with green bay with their offensive coordinator then coming to the eagles being their head coach in kansas city being their head coach and you see what he's doing in kansas city like folks really of course folks our age remember those eagles years and they just couldn't get over the hump but what he's doing now man it's amazing but yeah. before I uh, get off on this topic, real quick, just a quick one. Um, what I said, I was I was talking to one of my partners about it. I said the thing that uh, really separated Tom Brady is when he won one one without Belichick, because the coordinators, like he had good coordinators. If you had to say top tier, the best. Uh, Offense guy was Josh McDaniels, but we know Josh McDaniels is a terrible head coach, but he's a good offensive coordinator. But what Pat Mahomes has in Kansas City, you got an all-time defensive coordinator. You got an all-time offensive coordinator. You got a good offensive line. You got the second-best tight end to ever play the game. You have a lot of advantages. So when you said they were mediocre, I wouldn't even say they were mediocre. I wouldn't say they was like uh, past year's teams, but they do have good players with an elite defense. Now, the defense was definitely elite. It ain't even no question about that. But the question is for you guys, which I don't know I absolutely hate, just to get it out of the way, a lot of folks trying to put Pat Mahomes in that GOAT category, which I think is asinine. I'm like, you You on track for it. But you're nowhere near what Tom Brady 
a comma. And my argument towards that is literally, I, I can put a bunch of stats, but the only thing, just to make it short so we can move on, the two times that they played in the playoff, AFC Championship game and the Super Bowl, the man beat you, especially in the Super Bowl when he dominated you in the Super Bowl. And that's the GOAT at an older age. And I risk my case with that. Yeah, but if we look at Pat Mahomes and Tom Brady by 20 Go ahead, go ahead. Age, my fault. I'm just saying by the age of 28, um, they have very similar stats, but stats with very similar accomplishments. But on paper, Mahomes has accomplished a little bit more than Tom Brady by the age of 28. The, the only argument I have for that, which a lot of folks – uh, when they put up stats like that, they need to put up like the actual seasons. Tom Brady was like a fifth year senior when he came out in the uh to the NFL. Pat Mahomes came out as a junior. And we gotta acknowledge the two different the two different errors. One, yeah, yeah, you can say errors. I was just about to say the type of offenses that they were running in. They're not running that now, like they was running back then. These are like, of course, you passing the ball more. We can say Josh Daniels had better uh, passing um, touchdowns, yards, and all that stuff, completions, and all that. Even better uh, passing percentage than Tom Brady. But are we going to pit uh, Josh Allen over Tom Brady? No. And then that's why I said you, we talking about oh, Tom Brady up to 28. He probably, that's like his third or fourth year by the time he get to 28. When we talking about Pat Mahomes, that's probably like his seventh or eighth season. So you add no extra season on there. That's why I said they need to clarify that more and just add seasons. But he's on the right track, though. So I think it, I think he's closer than than than. Um, I think he's more close to Tom Brady than he's not. Like I don't think he's that far behind. Uh, just well, simply. He's well, oh, go ahead. Go I, ahead. I want to hear. It like, I look at it like this. I look at Tom Brady's first two Super Bowls. Uh, they didn't win those because of him. Mm-hmm. Um, every single Super Bowl Patrick McHolmes has has gone to and won, they won it because of him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that first year, I, and I think it was oh, – what's Brady's first <coughs> Super Bowl? 04, 04, 05, something like that? The first uh, Super Bowl, 01, 01. Yeah. That, that defense had a lot to do – uh, mm-hmm. with those two those two championships, man. Uh, so that's why I said I don't think it's as far off as, you know, it, it may seem. And then also there's the eye test. I, I'm a big eye test type person. Like, when I look at these games, do I see the second best quarterback or the first quarterback? And I think he's – when I watch this guy play, I see a quarterback that's really close <laughs> to Tom Brady. Uh this is really close to Tom Brady. It probably has a little bit more from the skill set side, but mm-hmm. as far as managing the game and he could he could, he could uh, do better there. But uh, I don't think it's that far off, man. I, I'm still going with Tom Brady as the goat because he won with another team, so you can't take that from him. So he doesn't have that. You know, you can say that Patrick has only won with Andy Reid. You know, Brady had that with Belichick. Then he went and won. Um, he went and won without him. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go with Brady because of that, but I don't think it's that far. I don't think it's too far away. I just I mm-hmm. feel because if you look at the stats, right, you split them up first seven seasons each, right? But you can't do you it like that. But that's what I'm saying. You can't do it like that. 96 because... games. Both of them with 96 games on their plate, right? But, you, that, but that's what I'm saying. You can't compare those – because they throwing, I bet if you look at the passing attempts, compare Tom Brady passing attempts to uh, Pat Mahomes passing attempts, it's like probably thousands more. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. You can't compare that because they're throwing the ball a lot more. That's almost like comparing. Pat, Pat threw the ball a lot more or Tom threw the ball a lot more? Pat. Pat. Yeah. But Pat definitely threw the ball more, bro. <laughs> Yeah, it ain't it ain't even no question. 
Yeah, he threw the ball. Go ahead. Oh, my fault. Because I ain't even trying to be on this topic that long. And I just want to go ahead and get this out the way. When you saying stuff like that, he ain't do nothing on his second Super Bowl. You may want to check that again. 32 for 48, 67%. 354 yards, three tubs. Defense allowed 29 points. Again, and that was against the who? Oh, that, that was, was against, that was against Carolina. Yeah, yeah against Carolina. Even with Pat throwing the ball more, he still had less interceptions. Mm-hmm. I don't mean that. I can tell you a bunch of folks that had less interceptions. But he still well, has 7,000 more yards than Tom Brady. Exactly. How, but how many passing attempts? He got to uh, plug those in. He had more passing <laughs> attempts. He had more passing attempts, but less interceptions. Like, bro, like, so pass three, three times, three times Super Bowl champion, three, uh, three times Super Bowl MVP to Tom Brady's only two time Super Bowl MVP. Three time All Pro and six time Pro Bowler. Six time uh, Pro Bowl. Six time Pro Bowler in their in their first six seasons. Tom Brady only had like three. And so like less more more oh, touchdowns, more more passing yards, more uh less in, less interceptions. Obviously, he's the better runner, more skilled, all those things. I mean, and he's just – it's a small sample size, and it's not like – yeah, the defenses or the teams weren't like they were back in the day, but Patrick Mahomes is beating the 49ers twice, who's been known for their defense, who's been top five defensively in those specific seasons. And so it's like – and then even the Eagles last year, their defense was top five, and he ran through that defense – Without a legit receiver, his best receiver was Juju Smith-Schuster, who is not what he was to me in Pittsburgh. And so it's like, I mean, to 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 do this at such a young age, yes, you got Andy Reid, because everybody tries to say, oh, he got Tyree Hill, he got Travis Kelsey, he had uh, McCole Hart, and all that kind of stuff. No, nah, he said, all right, bye, Tyreek. McCole even left for a little bit, he came back. But he lost many receivers, and he still did what he needed to do. Now I mean, yeah, I'm uh, yeah, I'm be like, I'm be honest, I'm a Tom Brady hater. I do not, I, he, he's oh, to me know. not a goat. To me, to me, well, I guess he, he's a quote unquote goat statistically, but in my opinion, I I I, I will take the Joe Montana's over him, and and you know, uh, you know, in some ways, Aaron Rodgers, and honestly, Patrick Mahomes is. He's right there, like Taylor saying. He's 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 right there. The only thing that's keeping him from being the goat is longevity. Is as far as we've only seen Patrick for six years, we saw Tom Brady for twenty one years. That is the only thing. But and and I, I mean, again, that defense really helped him out his first Super Bowl. Okay, he yeah, he threw a lot against Carolina. I mean, uh, Jake DeLong. I mean, no, nah, that ain't you know. I don't think well, that was now, all that. Now we're and, doing that. We we're doing that. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, how 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 great were those defenses that that Carolina Panther defense? And then obviously, like I said, the Rams, mm-hmm. uh, not the Rams, but the uh, the Falcons gave gave him one. The Seahawks gave him one. And they then gave? when Patrick, go yeah, ahead, right, yeah. And then when Patrick Mahomes played him in the Super Bowl, he had he had the ch- a chair, a TV, and a microphone stand as the offensive lineman. Like he didn't have no type of all line. He had to throw from his dog on butt to at least get the ball down the field. And so it's just like, you know, what if he had a full O-line? And, you know, what if he had, like, a full just offense against Tom Brady and a defense? Because the defense played terribly that day for him as well. And so – and then D4, if he wasn't outside, they, you know, they would have beat the Patriots that year in the AFC Championship and went to the Super Bowl. And so I think – I think – Tom Brady's just been the beneficiary of a lot of teams doing stupid stuff in the Super Bowl. And that's the only reason he has seven rings. He should really only maybe have four or five. The Rams and Seahawks, I mean the Falcons and Seahawks gave him those. And so, and 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 like and like um DJ was saying as well, like Patrick went and won a lot of those Super Bowls. Tom Brady was a game manager in his first Super Bowl. Patrick hadn't been a game manager in none of his Super Bowls. So now the stats that I was able to pull up 
by Go 28. Ahead. By 28. Now, this isn't exactly what my what my original uh, argument was earlier, but by 28, which I'm going to give you what you said, you got to take a year off, right? But if we go just by, you said you said because because uh Brady had what he had an extra no uh when when Mahomes Brady turned twenty eight what season was this? We're doing oh uh two thousand oh five in comparison to twenty seventeen to twenty three. Look <laughs> how many seasons that is. <laughs> Come on, bro. You just no, heard. that's one season off. That's six seasons for Pat Mahomes. That's five seasons for Brady. You may want to do yeah, your math again. Yeah. 2017 to 2023. Let's count them up. <coughs> count them up. 17, 18, 19, 20. Do I, if I add three more, what is that? Seven seasons. Come on, bro. 17, and Tom 18. Brady didn't even play his first year. Patrick Mahomes didn't play his first year either. Patrick Mahomes didn't play first year. You, you're only gonna make the point stronger when he, when you keep talking. That's what I'm trying to say. You're only gonna make the point stronger when. You but we're talking, talking about this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, right? When you look them up, right? When they keep comparing the about 28 age thing, this is what this is all I'm saying here, right? When they do that comparison, Mahomes has had a thousand more attempts than Brady. Okay. And still has less interceptions than Brady. So does Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson better oh, no. than Tom Brady. <clears throat> no, you don't have no ring. You can't. Yeah, you can't compare. No, he's not. Is he it's better than Mahomes? No. You can't. You can't so, compare Lamar Jackson to Tom Brady. So I'm, 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 that's that's what I'm saying. Do. I'm, I'm just statistics. going ahead. Okay. Since you want to really, really go there, tell me, tell me out of all those early years, how many of those guys on them Patriots team <coughs> precisely on the offense is going to the Hall of Fame? On the Patriots teams? Yeah. Who he played the with? Years, he what? played with Cats. Well, we talking offense or defense? Offense. Offense. Welker there. Welker, Welker don't have no Welker Super Bowl. Well, nope. Yeah, welcome. Didn't get a so far. <laughs> yeah, you had guys like Corey Dillon. Yeah, well, he, he did yeah, play Corey with Dillon. He had uh, Corey Dillon when Corey Dillon when he got Deion Branch. Corey Dillon was still yeah, Corey Dillon. Deion Branch. Yeah, so Deion Branch. Deion, Deion, Branch is Deion, not, Deion isn't. Huh? Deion Branch is not going to the Hall of Fame. I didn't say he was. I was, I was no, I said, say that, that. I said I said guys that are going to the Hall of Fame. David Patton is not going to the Hall of Fame. It's I honestly, it's, I he had a defense. Long time he had ago. a defense. <laughs> this is where it is. Okay, okay, but look, look, look. Out of out of the Mahomes offenses, right? Of, only of, one guy is going to that Hall of Fame, bro. Only one team. out of them teams. Two, two, two Tyreek is Hill. definitely guaranteed. We and got, Chad, we got, Chad, Chad Humphrey, his Tyreek center Hill. is going to be in the Hall of Fame because all he oh, does oh, is oh, make Pro Bowls every year. Okay, man, fine. If you want to give us this, <laughs> okay, take away that. You got Travis, you got Trap, you got Travis I'm Kelsey. About weapons. I'm talking okay, about Travis weapons. Kelsey and Tyreek Hill. Give me one for Tom Brady. In his latter years, he had Gronk. And he had, yeah, he had Gronk. And he had, I'm talking Randy about Gronk. his early years. Y'all talking about the early years? Let's talk about the early years. Uh, I, yeah, I have never. It was a defense. That I, I have yeah, never. He had more I have, of a defense. He had more cats on the defensive squad that's going to the Super Bowl than I mean, not Super Bowl, going to the Hall of Fame than Mahomes mm-hmm. is gonna have going to the Hall of Fame on his defense. Mm-hmm. Offensively, how many coordinators going question. to the Hall of Fame? Huh? How many coordinators? I, well, not coordinators, head coach. Well. You got the head coaches. Who? All right, this is how we're going to break it down. This is how you know. This is this will show you how much. Who has the better? Who has had? I'm talking about their first three Super Bowl wins. Right. Right. Who has the best best uh, coaches? Brady. Best coaches? Best coaches. Brady. Yeah, Brady. I think Brady had the better coaches. We literally got the best defensive coordinator of all time, and now we got the best offensive mind 
and we're going to say Tom he has to make it work. Tom made it work with way less than with, with Mahomes. Saturday. Ain't that the argument? Uh, uh, uh. Yes, that's why I'm breaking it down. All right. So, so okay. If you want to, you want to say coaches all of a sudden now. Okay. Who had the best tight end? Who had the best tight end? That's arguable. You talking about early in the career? We gonna early compare, in the career. Hold on, oh, hold on. Early in the career. Early hold in on. the career. Yes. Mahomes definitely had the better tight end. Yeah. But then offensive he ended up getting uh, so offensive hard. line. Offensive line. So for sure, for sure, Mahomes came into the NFL in a much better situation because they they this, you got to think this team was like who was before that. Uh, but hey, Alex hey, Smith. let's not take away from the fact. <laughs> so no, the Patriots were Alex almost Smith. there with with Bledsoe. Yeah, so yeah, they, they were not they were. almost there. What do you? Yeah, they, they made they made it. They went to the Super Bowl with Bledsoe. They, yeah, were, they, they went to the Super Bowl with Bledsoe. When did they go to the Super Bowl with Bledsoe? Ninety six. When did Tom Brady come into the league? 2000. 2000 or was it That's four years later. Four they years had, later. They, they still had more, they, they still had the same coaches. They, still had the same coaches. They, they, they did not have was, the same coach. That, yeah, that was definitely Bledsoe's team before Brady stepped in, after before he got hurt. That was Bledsoe's squad. So if you talk yes. about – And a backup came in 199. 199 came in and won you the Super Bowl. That is the GOAT. The defense, man. That defense. Is just that's cool. That defense. Ty Law is a Hall of Famer. That defense. Is and incredible. Patrick Mahomes had. If you plug in yeah, Patrick Mahomes in that defense, exactly. Like what? If you plug who in Patrick Mahomes with that defense who, in 2001. Now this, this, this would tell me. Hold on. This, hold on. This would settle the argument right here. Who played against better defenses? Who played that's, against a better defense? I think. I think. Uh, no, I, that is I, not I arguable. Great. Yeah, that is like, not man. arguable. That so is he, not so, arguable. So the Ram, the Rams defense, the Panthers defense, and um, the yeah, Eagles, we, we, the Eagles squad defense was trash. Come on, the man. Eagles defense was trash. I the Steelers the defense was trash. <laughs> the Ravens <laughs> defense was trash. I said the Panthers, bro. I like no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about in the Super Bowl. Or you talking about like overall in the playoffs? So let me o- mention this. Over. Bro. Go ahead. Let me ask you this. Go ahead. Who is ahead of Mahomes on this Brady race? If he's not close, are you are you saying that there's Brady and then everybody else is down here? Are you saying that like there's Brady and then Pat Mahomes and there's some people in front of them? To be honest, we can. Uh, it's an argument for Peyton Manning, but I think Pat is uh, number two right now. I like. I, I love Pat Peyton, number two. Bro. So you think the gap? Peyton. You think the, the gap between the gap the is two wide? Brady, in the rest of the quarterbacks in NFL history. Is so, so you would massive. say you would you would say right now, Peyton and I love Peyton. Peyton Manning. You think Peyton Manning is a better quarterback than, than Mahomes? It's arguable. This is it's a good argument. It's, it's a argue. good argument. It's, it's, it's just, very, very arguable now. Let's it's just let's really argue good argument. Yeah, yeah, it's really as Mahomes and Brady. Everything well, Mahomes, listen, listen here. Tom Brady doesn't have the strongest arm. Tom Brady is not the most mobile. Tom Brady is not uh the most accurate. He's but a game they manager. Have more weapons <laughs> on offense. He's a game manager. I, I never seen him. Game what game? Way more game more listen, weapons on offense. A game, a game management. A game so manager. Listen, a game manager. Game manage. manager is not going to bring you back from twenty eight to three. He wasn't Super a game Bowl. manager. Then he was a game who manager. Had, hey, the game no game answer. manager. You show me one game manager that can do that. Who had who better offense? That won a Super Bowl. The, who the, had better the, offenses in, in, in their career? Who had better offenses? Right, Mahomes or Peyton? Come on, man. You know who had the better offense? The overall offense. Overall offense. Peyton, hands down. Yeah, because he had yeah, running backs. Yeah, yeah, running backs. Well, of course, Peyton, Peyton, of course, Peyton played 20 years, bro. We can literally go from team to team. We can literally go team for team. Of course, he has the better offense. This is so this is no argument. Offense, is, is, Peyton, is Peyton Manning a game manager? No. Are you serious? He's he's a little bit of both. He's a game you didn't manager. You can stop with that. He's a game manager at the end of his career. Peyton, Peyton, he's a game Peyton, manager and a game I'm, changer. I think y'all right. mentioned the, the, the skill set of managing uh, the game. Uh, like if uh, I'm if I'm wait. picking a quarterback, 
if I want a quarterback for my team, more so than strong arm and all of the other intangibles, give me the quarterback that can manage these wins more so than anything. Uh, it, what's funny about this, Brinsky, is you an Alabama fan, right? Mm-hmm. Aren't you an Alabama fan? Yeah, Didn't y'all win a national championship when the quarterback threw for 68 yards? Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. It is vital. Listen, the game of but, but what was he doing? football was invented. Did we win it because of him? <laughs> The game of no. football was in the game of football was invented before the forward pass. You gotta remember that. It That's comes down point. to blocking and tackling at the That's end of the day. Point. I'm gonna I'm go ahead and Tom get Brady's greatest way. skill set is he's elite game manager. I'm talking about a game manager so good that he changes games. That's what I look at when I see Tom Brady. That is the skill that set that I know. So Pat, so Pat Mahomes is the game manager. He's both. <laughs> he's got skills no. in the scene, bro. Look, you, Peyton Manning is a different man. piece because he was able to go up and change plays. Hey, you know what? That's my, game my, management. My, That's my exactly fault. what I'm talking we, about. We've been on this topic way, way too long. We're going to argue. We, I'm going to actually make this a topic next week. Come with your facts <laughs> now. I'm telling you. Because I've just been throwing out facts. I need time. y'all to come with it. So whoever want to be on the show next week, better come with the facts. I'm talking about the best that you come up with. But what are we gonna uh, do top top five QBs of all time, top three. No, no, no. no. We're talking about the GOAT conversation, but we'll we'll GOAT conversation. We'll, gotcha. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk about it. Yeah, let's go on move on, man. We we got <laughs> yeah. And you already know the halftime show, the man <laughs> Usher, Usher, Mr. Confession, Usher. Mr. Yeah. 8701, Mr. My Way. <laughs> 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 she likes it my way. Hey, bro, that that may be my favorite. Girl, um, that, bro, that's like one of the most gangster songs ever. He <laughs> said, "My dog said, uh, man, how I forget the lyrics just that quick." He said, uh, "Uh, you can get mad if you want to, say whatever you want, but you still gonna give it up." <laughs> but <laughs> she likes it, my bro. That's the most gangster. <laughs> And what make it so bad, Tyrese is in the video. Uh, the one that uh, the antagonist. He the antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it, that's crazy, bro. But, uh, oh, man. of course, it was a dope performance. <laughs> it was a dope performance. Shout out to Tyrese, man. Shout out to Tyrese. I love Tyrese, dog. But that, it's just funny that he was just so happy to be the antagonist. But Tyrese, my dog, man. Tyrese, my dog. But uh, what do you want from me? No, nah, no, nah, I ain't, nah, I ain't, I ain't gonna argue. No, nah, I'm not gonna even get on him like that, man. Cause that's uh actually Woo! some the some stuff Jango. that most men that some most men would would be pissed off about. Him. I I feel them on that. But uh, my dog, us out there turning up. Everybody came out. Alicia Keys missing notes. Shout out to her. She still. One of my favorites got Luda out there with the whole got Afro Luda. I'm talking about Afro Luda. Shots of Atlanta, Mister. Yes, sir. And then had Lil John out there, JD with his um with his uh, like with leprechaun. his <laughs> three year old sock, <laughs> like something that my daughter will wear. <laughs> I don't know what that Back was, bro. Still the stick. <laughs> Bro, somebody said on Twitter said out of all the outfits in JD closet, he chose to come out like that. <laughs> out of all the stuff, bro. It, well, I it, thought he was too low grade. And, and, but JD, but JD a uh, good sport for that. So shout out to JD. But the one thing that was happening out there with Miss Alicia Keys getting rubbed on of the singing of my boo. <laughs> and it's a lot of mixed feelings. A lot. Some people saying that it, they just performers and entertainers, yada yada yada. And some of them saying, like, nah, bro, I ain't going for nothing like that. So I try to put myself in the shoes of an entertainer, <laughs> and I said, if I'm Swiss Beats, and that's Alicia Key, the one thing I said he couldn't trip up. Trip about that because everybody who know their history, how they got together. I said he couldn't trip off that. That was me personally. He couldn't trip off that. 
But if I just got with a girl and you talking about rubbing on, I'm talking about rubbing on the booty too, dog. <laughs> I'm talking about rubbing on the booty, hugging all up on her. Like, I don't know. This ain't no movie now. That is something that you can you can you can actually sing the song without rubbing on. But I don't want y'all to see <clears throat> quickly on this, man. I, how how were y'all thoughts on it? Because I like I wouldn't like, but I would have been like, hey. If that's what you want, you over there. <laughs> I'm cool with that. So, what y'all we thoughts on that? Now. We all know by now Usher is a menace. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he is a menace to society, a menace to your household. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Usher coming. Hey, man. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to spit that album. <laughs> <laughs> hide your kids, hide your wife, boy. This, this man is a menace, bro. <laughs> Hey, oh God, bro! If your girl get them backstage passes to that Usher concert, man. I look, I don't know who works him or Chris Brown. I look, I saw a clip earlier. Usher on the guitar, Nicki Minaj singing. He bumping his face up against her booty, <laughs> and smack on the behind while he playing the guitar. I'm like, yo, this this dude ain't got no type. Of, he don't care. You know what I'm saying? No. Like, hey, man. Usher hugged Alicia like he ain't seen her since the Mabu video. He was on her. Hey, they, they, they the video back. That time she came back so fast, I said, "Yo, the way he he groping her, like you know what I'm saying, hugging my boo, or singing all in her ears stuff." Hey man, just like the Boondocks episode, bro. I know Swiss felt like uh like legendary. Like I, I, I bet you he did. Look, man, I feel what he was saying. This is art. This is whoop de woo. You know, he know he know Alicia not going <laughs> home to Usher. But God, Libra. Mm. Usher, Usher ain't have no like like this this woman married, bro. You all on this, you got yeah, come on, man. Hey, if she would have started twerking on Usher, bro, like come on, bro. <laughs> come on, dog. It would have been crazy. And Alicia looked comfortable, bro. She was so comfortable, dog. Like that was her man hugging her. Like, bro, hey, look, dog. <coughs> I know it was a show, and that's what I'm gonna chop it up to. It was a show. What was Swizzy gonna do in that in that in that moment? What could he do? Was he gonna go and stop the whole show? Was he gonna run up on stage, man, get jumped by security? Look, man. Yeah, he, he had to play this, dog. <laughs> he had to play it cool, but everybody was on Swizzy. Uh, Swizzy comments like crazy, man. That, that had, hey, Usher had that man looking crazy, bro. For him to have to come out and say that stuff, bro. Like, hey, crazy, bro. Crazy. That's all I got to say. It was crazy, bro. What y'all say, <laughs> Tim? Yeah, so, uh, so I, I watched it. I watched the halftime show. <coughs> I, I was, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, Usher put on a great show, man. I did not. He, he did about 10, 15 songs that he didn't even sing the words to. He just rattled them off. I was like, man, I forgot this dude got all these hits. And, you know, I was trying to enjoy the show, but uh, we, you know, first half of the game, I was disappointed. So I was kind of, uh, so I saw the, the Alicia Keys thing. And here's the thing, this is what I want to point out. All right. <laughs> you got to walk with me. Usher has a Las Vegas residency, residency right? He's, he's been there a year, right? He well, does well, this. Yeah. He does this at every show. If you watch these clips of this residency, you see the skating. You see him find a young lady. More likely, it's gonna be a celebrity, and he's gonna serenade her. He does this every single show. I've only seen one person turn him down. That was Mary J. Blige. She just kind of pushed him away. Uh, so. As much as we talk about his Usher out of pocket, we got to put some type of on his own Alicia Keys in that moment. Uh, because <laughs> if you are just like, just, just like you're going to pound the fist and say Usher doesn't respect that man's marriage and that marriage, the person that was married is up there mm-hmm. <laughs> participating in this too. Mm-hmm. So uh, I got to look at her, man. He was kind of out of pocket for that. But then in his defense, this is part of my show. You know what you're going to get. I've been doing this for a whole year. 
I extended my Vegas residency so that they would pick me for the Super Bowl. Like, you know what you were going to get if you were a young lady going on that stage with Usher uh, for that. For pound that town. Uh, she just left pound town. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, I got to look at them, man. And, and, you know, I don't know what's going on in their household. Maybe Swiss and Alicia kind of get down like that. I don't know. Uh, for me, it was a bit much. I wouldn't have liked it. Uh, but, yeah, I got to look at her, man. I got Like, hey, if it wasn't cool, it's because you allowed it. Uh, you can spin around and dance and moonwalk away and still sing and perform. Uh, I've seen other actresses. I mean, uh, famous people do that, you know. Uh, I saw Beyonce have a wardrobe mal- malfunction. Her dancers covered up. They didn't miss a beat. So, like, you can perform your way out of that without making it obvious that, hey, I don't want you all up behind me like that. So, yeah, man, that's that's who I'm looking at. I'm looking at her. Like, it's your magic, <laughs> not mine. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right about that. Yeah, man. <clears throat> yeah, man. Yeah, Brinsky, and then like, after you did, we gonna move on. Yeah, like I, I, I wasn't shocked, man. I was not surprised. Um, I watched uh, Shannon Sharp's interview with him before the inter- before the Super Bowl. I did it with him a couple weeks ago. Uh, and when Shannon Sharp introduced Usher, one of the things he said is he's a global sex symbol. Like, I mean, that's what Usher is. He's been doing R&B for 30 years. He has all these hits, My Boo Burn, and OMG, all these things. Like, I mean, he, yeah, I mean, he is classic. And so you expect Usher to behave like he, you know, did. He created this song with Alicia Keys. Obviously, we know Alicia's loyal. Uh, And so, you know, obviously she doesn't, you know, she would never, I don't believe cheat on her husband. But, um when Usher gets around women, you know something's going to come up. You, we saw what happened with Kiki Palmer. We saw the uh, the backlash uh, that her fiancé or boyfriend received, baby daddy received off of that. And and But it's like, you can't, you and, and that's a whole other topic of a whole other day, but it's just like, you have to expect this with Usher. Like, Shannon Sharp even said, um, my daughter going to be the at your concert that we're going to tonight, but she's not married. So I wouldn't be too bad if, you know, whatever, you know, went down. So he respects married couples as far as those. I think he respects all married couples. It's just this is a show. This is entertainment. This is the Super Bowl. And so, you know, he's going to do some things that may be suspect um, in a lot of regards just to, to regular married people. But if they're a celebrity and they're married, you know, OK, he might go a little further, especially if they do music because of the uh, career that he's made being a R&B uh, superstar. Um, and so, you know, I, I I expected it. I didn't expect anything less. Nothing. I didn't expect Usher to do anything less than, than Alicia Keys. Than what he did with Alicia Keys, you know, rubbing on her and, you know, you know, touching her and all those types of things. Um, but, you know, I, yeah, I wouldn't, heck no, I wouldn't white lie my wife to do it. I don't care. My wife, Megan Good. I don't care if she, uh, she's Haley Kilgore. I don't care if she's Megan Fox. Whatever it is, like, no, like, you're not touching my wife like that. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're Chris Brown. I like Chris Brown. I like us, but I'm just, I'm not, I'm, I'm glad not, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm I'm so glad you went there because that was gonna be my next question to everybody up here because pretty much, <coughs> Josh, you basically technically married, uh, but everybody else is married up here because I'm about to say just a simple yes or no. Tess, would you if your if Usher came by you <laughs> and your wife got up and did all that, would you be happy about it? I ain't going to say be happy about it. Well, would you not care or would you be pissed off? I'd be pissed off about it. Okay. I'd be upset. Dang. Yeah. Dang. Man. I, 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 I didn't even I'm know. Be real. I'm going to be totally honest. I wouldn't be pissed off. I wouldn't be pissed off. I wouldn't be pissed. I'll just be honest. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't be pissed. I would probably have a similar reaction to Swiss. I wouldn't be pissed off, though. I would not be pissed because I know, and this is coming from a dude who do music, I know, <coughs> I know, like, just, just like Josh said, bro, 
what do you expect, man? You know what I'm saying? But I will say this. It did take me by surprise, though. Because they could have did that song and kept a little more distance. A lot more distance. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> as far as being pissed off, I wouldn't have been pissed, man. What I had felt some... You know what? I would... It would have been one of the things that I'm gonna rag on my woman about for a long time. I'm be on, I'm gonna be on her butt about it. You let know me, what I'm saying? Me. I'm gonna really, I'm gonna joke. I'm gonna be let on her body. I'm gonna be like, hey, oh, she tried to talk crap to me. I'm like, hey, man, remember you was on stage with us? Remember you was on stage with us? So, hey, hey, when I'm on stage with Nicki Minaj and she start grinding on me, I don't want to hear nothing. You know what I'm, I'm saying? A, I'm gonna ask you this. You said you wouldn't be pissed. And that's your stand. I would not be pissed. Pissed is a strong word. Okay, would you be, be mad? Would you be mad? Would you be mad? I wouldn't be mad. Okay, now let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Yeah. You would, and I'm so glad you brought that up because that that's the question that I want to ask. You seen the Nicki Minaj and Usher thing? What is that? Yeah. With, what is that? With I, your I, life? That was out of line, dog. Now, now, <laughs> oh, not that was not, not that was out of line. Now that was out of line. <laughs> Usher was bumping his face up against her booty and then he got off the guitar and smacked on the ass. I mean, it's entertainment, bro. It's entertainment. It's entertainment. It was entertainment, but it's like, bro, so come on. Too much, bro. No. Bro, so, bro, so, so, bro, so, so, you smacking his cheek up against her ass. Like, so, so, you okay with, with him serenading the booty? <laughs> with his hand just going ahead and rubbing on the booty, and then the next thing you know, <laughs> his thing on her on her butt, man. You cool with that, but you don't want him. <laughs> man. Look, 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 look. This is how I looked at it. This is how I looked at it. The biggest difference is, right, the My Boo video. See, Usher, when he did that thing with Nicki Minaj, they didn't have no video it, like that out where it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, they, hold on, never, they never did so, that in no type of capacity. So, what if they had a song? Now, what if they had a song? If they had a song, then it would be okay, man. Listen, was smacking that booty. He did, what he did with Nikki, <laughs> what he did with Nikki in comparison. This is Nikki to, booty. This is man here, bro. Just hitting that thing, bro. <laughs> hitting that right, thing. Nah, he, he, he's smacking his cheek up against that. Like, yeah, pink, 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 smacked her on the boot. <coughs> and even Nikki was like looking at him, stupid, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, roll the eyes and everything, like, God damn, you know what I'm saying? But, tough boot. So, I'm just saying, the, the my boot, it, it, you know, even with that video, man, you, you got to remember that chemistry on that video, the way that they did. Now, it's a lot of things I'm going to talk about after this podcast when it relates to Usher. And Alicia Keys, I don't want to say it on here. I don't want to get canceled. Y'all <laughs> yeah. probably know what I'm talking about. It's, but, uh, it's a lot of speculation on, on Alicia. Man. And it's yeah, man, we'll leave, man. We'll, we'll leave it alone. We'll leave it alone. We're going to yeah, move, yeah, move on. Hold on. What you yeah. about to say to you? My fault. I was about to say, I do, I do want to add something now. I, like I said, me personally, I'd be pissed. But I want to, I, I do want to say that. It matters um, for them because they're performers, right? right? And we're assuming that he just did this by surprise, right? If he, if, if they were just supposed to perform and he just out of the blue in the moment did this and she went with it, then it's kind of it's kind of inappropriate. But you also she could have had a conversation with Swift, like, "Hey, we're gonna do this song." <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, they they performed it, they practiced it. We don't we don't know if this was just oh, you know, he decided to go rogue on the Super Bowl, or if it was already, permission. yeah, already playing. I don't know. It's, it's one of those Hollywood things. They yeah. move a little different in Hollywood. So, I should probably ask for permission. He yeah, probably said, "Hey, man, this is what I'm gonna do." It's oh, okay. Cool. I smack on the booty. It's okay if I rub my <laughs> dick. Did not smack the <laughs> on the booty. <laughs> He did not smack Alicia on the booty, man. But he Come was on. so rubbing on it. He was rubbing on that thing like it was a, uh, like it was a, uh, what they call it? Uh, and he, him, and he had the Michael Jackson glove on, too. With the Wait. Michael Jackson glove. With the Michael Jackson glove to Haven. Come on, now. Right, but at least, look, at look, least. Look, 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 look. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. He was rubbing that thing like it was a glove. I'm, I'm going to say this. I feel like. I, 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 like I said, I feel Swizzy when he said, this is art and entertainment. 
You know what I'm saying? No. I, I feel like Twizzy already knew what was going to happen before <coughs> the show. I'm, okay. Now, we got, now, we now, got... now, now, if you ask me, would I have given him permission to do my wife like that? No. Nah. I'd be like, nah. You're going to no. have to... Uh, Okay, you won't have I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna say this then because we, we gotta move on. We gotta move on because this this one was hilarious, man. Because there's a lot of capping coming out of y'all mouth in a, in for a little. For I ain't never been put in that position, dog. I don't, hey, no, don't want to be put in that position. Let me tell you at least I, I I can care less. He, go ahead, my, real quick. Okay, real quick. at least he ain't go as far as Justin Timberlake did. Yeah, I know he did. Yeah, 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 he ain't no titty yeah. Out. Nah, ain't. Hey man, I thought that was part of the routine. I still believe that. And she, I don't know, man, because he Come knew on. something. It's a routine. It's a show. But but she wasn't married. He wasn't married. So that's different. Nikki but, wasn't probably married when she did what she what he did. What he did. But the Nikki. thing is, I didn't want to put on the record. I can care less about these folks' uh, marriages. I can care less about what they approve. I'm just talking about me. I'm just talking <laughs> about me and me only. So if that man feel that way, hey, God bless you now. That's God you bless too. me. But I'm telling you, them women be like, oh, don't be insecure and all that about all this, yada, yada, yada. Bet. You go find the next girl. Next time y'all go to the club, anything, you see a girl twerking just out behind her. Mm. Let's see how fast that tra- switch up <laughs> real quick. Mm. Like, man, I'm just the if the shoes on the other foot and Swizzy had some woman grinding on him, boy, you already know. You oh, already yeah. know what time it is. It you already been, know what time. It been game over for Swizzy. So yeah. you know, true, true. We true we business. we know where the double standards come in, but hey, <laughs> folks, we just same way they go with men. We got some that benefit us, and and we got some that don't benefit us. So it is what it is. We got quickly to talk on the uh, Hall of Fame, just basically uh, the guys that's in there. <laughs> I said on uh, um, probably I, I can't even tell you how many pods ago when they announced it. Yeah, it was it was way way longer than that, probably. But it was yeah, it was uh, probably like five or six podcasts ago or something like that. I can't remember when they announced the finalists or the semifinalists. I can't remember which one we did, but I was very very. I was standing on the table like I was a voter. Like Devin Hester needs to be in the Hall of Fame, mm-hmm. and my boy made it in there. And pretty much a lot of these guys we all grew up on, the White Freeney. Mm-hmm. I know Quint hey, definitely Jay happy about Baby. that. We got uh, Julius Peppers, got Pat Willis, got uh, <coughs> Mango, oh, Stephen. Ma- oh man, I'm saving uh, Andre for last. I, I I don't even know how to uh, say this uh, last guy's name. Randy Gunshire or uh, something like that. Grandshire? I don't know. I don't know. But shout out! But shout out to him for finally getting in there too. Um, Mango is uh, Steve McMichael's, but uh, Andre Johnson is extremely proud of. And I know. Uh, shout out to the U. Shout out to this man's <coughs> team. The Houston Texans. Yeah, other yeah, guys, I wish that could have. Other guys that are, it's it's so many guys yeah, that get so. snubbed every year, man. Mm-hmm. I believe Fred Taylor, man, Fred Taylor deserves to be in there because if he didn't play in the AFC, he would have made plenty, plenty of Pro Bowls, mm-hmm. plenty, plenty of Pro Bowls. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Tory Holt, uh, Reggie Wayne. Uh-huh. Jimmy Smith with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Hope I get to interview him one day. Right. But uh, yeah, man, it's it, it be so many guys. I can go on and on and on with guys, and it's only gonna get worse because I'm like, bro, this shouldn't even be hard. And one guy, you- and I'm uh, say this, man. I'm gonna let you say something real quick, then we move on real quick. And Ted's gonna like this one. <laughs> Who is? Y'all got a guy that should be in the Hall of Fame, and he's a running back. Who am I talking about, Ted? He should be in the Hall of Fame, should have been in the Hall of Fame. The 49ers got a guy? Roger Craig. Man. Roger Craig should be in there. Yeah. Should have been in there. And I am so pissed off. Like, every like every year just pisses me off. Like, bro, what are we doing? 
It's some guys I just like, bro. How is this guy in there? And it, and I I love Steve and Mike. Shout out to Mango. I know he battling uh what do they call it? Uh LS. ALS. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And huh, I hate that disease. I wish that was not a thing. But he does not deserve to be over there over Roger Craig. Roger Craig is definitely should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago. Sure. And I pray he see this video and Sterling Sharp should have been in the Sterling Hall of Sharp. Fame. Man. Uh -huh. I, I don't even want to get angry, bro. I don't even want to get angry because there's so many guys that I have seen that just got a, they finally got Zach Thomas in there last year. I think it was last year. And I was like, bro, about time. Like, you know who's a Hall of Famer. And I just feel like like Eli Manning <laughs> probably beat Tom Brady. No, you know, probably beat Tom Brady in them two Super Bowls. Eli Manning is not a Hall of Famer. There's so many guys I'll put ahead of Eli Manning, bro. Yeah. I know they're going to try to force it in <laughs> false, but be quiet, man, oh, bro. No. <laughs> oh, no. I feel you. Oh, no. But, you don't know. hey, the one I want to step on boy, the one I want to step on boy, AJ, though, man. Thank the you. reason I think AJ made it before Reggie Wayne and Toe Ho is because of the caliber of quarterbacks he had doing what he did. Uh, being a Texan fan, we seen so many trash to mediocre quarterbacks throwing Andre Johnson the ball. He's had so <laughs> many job. starting quarterbacks. I mean, the best quarterback he had in his career, hands down, was probably uh, – was probably – well, let me say Texan-wise, was Matt Shaw. Mm -hmm. He went through the David Carr years. Mm -hmm. He went through the Matt Shaw. He went, he went through all those crazy, crappy quarterbacks that we threw at him, and he still made those plays. Now, when you look at a Torrey Holt, which is hands down one of my top top receivers, top five receivers of all time. I but when the Ooh, Texans – I love Torrey Holt, man. I love Torrey Holt too. Top he, five. He's cool. one of my. He, he was one of my. Look, I was a Rams fan when the Oilers left and went to Tennessee before the Texans came in 2002, 2003 season. Right. I watched the Rams. I really <coughs> liked the Rams. But when you look at those teams, when you look at these receivers we're naming, look at the quarterbacks that they had: Kurt Warner, Peyton Manning. Mm -hmm. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Consistently great quarterbacks. Andre Johnson did what he did with mediocrity, bro. His entire career. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. When he went to the Colts, did he have uh, Andrew Luck one year? Did he? I believe. Or was so. Luck retired mm -hmm. by then? Who? I'm oh. not sure. Oh no, no. I don't AJ, think AJ went to the Colts. But, 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 but he won Andre Johnson. Like the Andre Johnson that we yeah yeah know. yeah by that time he was he was way past you know he was at the later part of his career and he went to Tennessee which I, I yeah, bro I hate, that he, <laughs> I, I hate he stayed in the AFC like that but in the AFC South at that but I'm gonna say this man the main <laughs> reason I think that they put him in over those two guys which those hey, Tory Holt Reggie Wayne super great receivers I hope they make it in in the next year or two. But when you look at what he had to play with, he had nothing. He had he made those quarterbacks who they are. He made their careers better. They did not necessarily make his career better. And I feel like that's why he got in over the other two guys that we were named. Because we talked about this on the pod. We, you know, I, I, I was rooting for AJ to get in. But we did, I, I honestly didn't think. I thought he was probably going to get snubbed. Uh, by Tory or yeah, Reggie too. Wayne easily. I thought that that was going to happen because uh, they both have rings. And um, and what they brought to the game, those are some great, great, great wide receivers. But Andre Johnson was great in his own sense with without a great quarterback. He never played with a superstar quarterback like those other two guys. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. That's what I got to say. Big shout-outs to Andre H. Davis. 
Super happy. Yeah, I, One of my favorite yeah. receivers of all time. I had to let you uh get to <laughs> talk about your boy. But the only thing I would say over that, it ain't like Torrey Holt played with Kurt Warner for like 10 years, dog. It like he played with Kurt Warner for like their Super Bowl year, and they lost that year, and then they went back to the Super Bowl. Those are Kurt Warner's prime, prime years, them three years, three to uh, yeah, four Mark years. Mark, Mark Bolger, man. Mark, he made Mark <laughs> Bolger. <laughs> yeah, he, he but, yeah, made, but yeah, yeah, he definitely he, made Mark. Yeah, Mark stepped away. Man, Tory Tory Holt is is a was a very highly touted. All these guys were uh highly touted uh receivers when they came out. For real. But I'm I, I was just so happy for uh Andre, which I'm going to say on the record once again for the one million time. It shouldn't even be no argument. I hate when they bring up this argument. The greatest college football team to ever be assembled, the two thousand Miami Hurricanes. Don't believe it. Look at the roster. <laughs> Y'all can talk about Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, and uh, Justin Jefferson all you want. If Sean Taylor is sitting on the bench, that tells you everything you need to know about that team with Clinton Porter, <laughs> Frank Gore, uh, Willis McGahee, Andre Johnson. Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. I can go down yeah. and listen. And it, it easily, if they went in 2000, that would – that would top this one. He, he could possibly, but they wouldn't have Sean in them because then they had Santana, Reggie Wayne, and Andre Johnson. Mm-hmm. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous to have that on your team. And then you still got, oh, uh, now they ain't have uh, EJ. Ken Dorsey was their quarterback. Yeah, I know. I know Ken was their uh, quarterback, but still, bro. And then you got Kellen Winslow. And then you got Vince Wolford coming off the bench. Then you got Reggie Wayne uh, was on that team. Reggie won on the uh, national championship team. The two thousand Miami Hurricanes. <laughs> now, yeah, I went back to the two thousand one. My fault. That's why I said uh, okay. all them boys on there with Santana Moss and all them. All gotcha. them boys was on that squad, and that was just like, come on, bro, what are we doing? Gotcha. Look, the talent out there, and then you got Ed Reed back there. These mm-hmm. are guys that come on, bro. This this is why I say this. I'm gonna uh, go back. I'm gonna go back just for a hot second. This is why I said he played against better defenses. Tom Brady went against two of the greatest safeties to ever play this game in Troy Polamalu and Ed motherfucking Reed. It is unbelievable, bro, to see that on that Miami Hurricane. Defense. I am. Then you got Jonathan Vilma, DJ Williams. Like, come on, bro. It's just like the names just keep just. And we're not just talking about no uh, mediocre Jeremy guys. Shockey. Jeremy Shockey, yeah. Frank Gore. Yes. Frank Good Gore was seeing nowhere near that field during that year. Yes, Will Fork was on that team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, like, bro. I, if I forget a name, that lets you know how deep the team is called. But, but Montreal, yeah, Montreal, bro, boy, they had some, they had some players on that squad, man. I, I would never, if anybody tried to argue with me on that, bro, I'd just be like, pull up the roster, pull up the roster. I give you Justin Jefferson. I give you them three guys. Give me the rest. I can name ten easily from this 2001 team. Easily. Oscar Parrish. Look at like, the players bro, that they have to play against in practice my, every day. My easily one of my favorite players. It, I have so many. A lot of them just I just like the secondary more than anything. I'm like free cornerbacks, free safety, safety. Sean Taylor is on the bench. Let that sink in your head. He is on the bench. Man, he had come one on, of the bro. fastest guys to ever run in the combine, Philip Buchanan. He ran a four one nine. I'm telling you right now, I put <clears> Philip <throat> on Jamar Chase and all them. I'm not saying that that wouldn't be a good matchup, and then I'm saying that nobody would get the edge on that. But <clears throat> if them boys think about coming up that middle any type of way, just throwing the ball, I will be worried about Jonathan Vilma. 
or one of those safeties knocking my head off. And I mean, <laughs> knocking my head off. You may not get up. Yeah. Dog. <laughs> the rules was different then too. So they were I know that, man. people. But but the thing, the thing is, dog, <laughs> them dudes still it's so many hits that you can see on them boys now that are still legal to this day. But yeah. that boy's like, should we throw the flag? It, it, it'll be so iffy because they just knocked them out. But shout out to the Hall of Fame class. And Devin, I think Devin Hester was on that squad, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yep. But, but, if it, I, but if he wasn't, like, bro, that just the talent during that time, bro. That was, that was a beautiful time. But just want to shout out those guys. We're going to move on to – NBA All Star Weekend, which is this weekend, you know the festivities. I think I, I'm gonna go to one NBA All Star game one of these days, dog. I always wanted to go as a kid. I the one I really wanted to go to the most was 2003, which was Jordan's last year in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I wanted to go to it so bad, bro, and I can't remember what happened. But uh, I show watched, but the NBA All Star Weekend is easily like the best like uh, festivities for everybody. Like man, the parties I heard were off the chain. Matter of fact, the last time they was in Atlanta for the All Star game, the city shut down. Like everybody out there, like it's a freak net boy. So yeah. Yeah. the question is for this one for this topic, like what's the uh. Uh, what are you looking forward to for this all all star the three point contest, the dunk contest, the all star game, the rookie challenge, the celebrity game? Um, what y'all got? I'm looking forward to the fact that they're actually going back to the East versus West. Mm-hmm. About time. Mm-hmm. I was so tired of the Braun versus KD team. And the these individual players having their own squads, and then they're mixing it up from between East and West. And I I, I love the fact that the older All Star Games was a whole East versus West competition. Mm-hmm. Then they started making it an individual thing, and I it kind of lost me. Then it just became so uncompetitive, like so uncompetitive. No defense being played, things of that nature. I hope that they can get back on on the roll of actually having these games a little more competitive. No, we don't want, we don't want them to get injured or go crazy on each other. We don't want Draymond throwing elbows and kicking people in the nuts. I'm not looking, you know, but on the <laughs> in, in the same breath, I wanted to get back to the East versus the West. Bring it back to its roots, man. Get, give us some entertaining ball play. We don't want to be seeing uh, no defense being played and all this. And uh, it's just like – it was like for the past few years, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, it was like watching the Harlem Globetrotters. Mm-hmm. Everybody yep. can shoot. Everybody – it just it, – no defense being played. That's not basketball. Mm-hmm. Get back mm-hmm. to what we used to see back in the 2000s, back in the 90s, back in the 80s. These guys are balling. That's what we want to see, man. Bring it back to the East versus the West and make it entertaining, bro. It was so boring to watch when you got these guys just jacking up. We all know Curry can shoot. We all know these guys. Look, man, some guys that we don't think can shoot, be shooting in practice and making shots that we ain't never seen them make in games. Now, when you do an all-star game where it ain't no defense being played like that, man, it's not the NFL, man. We ain't got to worry about these cats really getting hurt like that, man, in basketball, not to that capacity. So it's just I wanted to get back to what it used to be, and that's what I'm looking forward to is how they're going to facilitate this East versus West all-star game. Dunk contest yeah. was trash last year. Hopefully they come back and they, and they do it. <laughs> it was super, super garbage. Last let, year, let, yeah, let so. me uh uh just jump in there real quick because I wanted I didn't want you to lose that point of uh, just like how things used to be, bro. I've been so critical with David Stern over the years, though. I mean, like super, super. Not that not David Stern. Uh, 
Adam Silver. Adam Silver. I've been so critical because I'm like, bro, a lot of this stuff you don't need to do. David Stern left this game like a weld or machine, dog. Like a weld or machine. It doesn't need nothing. I am not, I, me. Some people like the end season tournament. I absolutely hate it. I think it's stupid. It, it's pointless. Like, what is the point? Nobody cares. Nobody can tell you the name of the uh, in-season tournament thing. It doesn't matter. It's not going to do nothing. I'm not signing you to no five years, $200 million contract to win no in-season tournament. I'm not signing you to uh, go to the All-Star. Matter of fact, you make an All-Star game. This is what really pissed me off about the All-Star game, period. You go to the All-Star game, like, yeah, man, you, you get a folks to show or whatnot. You all, of course, they always did that. Like the first and second quarter, like just play around, just guys do their tricks and stuff. But that second, that second half of the game, dudes are playing basketball, bro. That's what I remember. Dudes like, no, I'm trying to beat you, dog. I'm trying to show you. I'm not trying to give you these points. Like, what, bro? I'm trying to beat you. And that's what, and I felt like that's what the game has lost, dog. And Adam Silver just messing up. The just messing up the NBA because it's not the same, especially with that uh, playing tournament. Like, bro, if you can't get to the AC, you should not want to. Like, bro, you should just go home. Let's get the playoffs started, dog, because this is pointless. Like, what is this? Like, we're just doing too much. But I just had to get that out. I'm glad you said that, Dave. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so nope. I guess. Oh, you go ahead. No, no, I was whenever one of y'all go. Oh, yeah. So I'm um, man, this all-star game, all-star weekend, rather. Uh first of all, I want to shout them out for doing the HBCU game on uh, doing all-star weekend. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I think it's like Virginia, Virginia Union, Wisdom Salem is gonna play that Saturday. That's pretty dope. Um some that I don't know. It's gonna be exciting to watch, but you know. Pretty much, they don't put Steph in the three-point contest no more. So they got him versus uh, Sabrina. Uh, what's her name? Taylor Clark. Taylor Clark. No, no, it's not. He probably lose her, but I'm talking about uh, a Nesca. Sabrina Ionescu. No. I thought it was. I thought he was going against Taylor Clark. No man, she yeah, ain't even in the league. Cause she's she's um she's like the women's all time <laughs> leader. So they gonna they gonna battle it out. Uh, so I see them trying to do a little different things. Like I said, I'm glad they're getting back to the East versus West uh, format. Um, as far as the – honestly, the skill competitions, man, the three-point shootouts and the dunk contest, they haven't been the same in a long time, man. And I think that is spilling over into the game, man. Uh, a lot of people like to let, blame, blame LeBron for that, you know, not participating in the dunk contest. Ever since then, you don't see stars in the dunk contest anymore. Uh, uh, but I think, yeah, like that alone probably changed it a bit to where they don't take it more serious. Um, one thing the in season tournament did prove to me, though, even though I hated it too, I hated the courts. Like that, it was giving me a headache trying to watch basketball with different color courts. But uh, one thing it did prove is when you have <laughs> players play for something they will show up and play. So I think that, hey, if you put some type of incentive on this all-star game, um, find some way to make it meaningful. Isn't it in baseball? Don't you get something for winning the all-star game? Yeah, home home field advantage in the World Series. Event. Yeah, if you – I mean, I don't, you, obviously you can't do that in a seven-game format, or, but you can come up with something uh, to make the game meaningful, and I think you'll get a much better product, man, because the pride that used to be back in – the 90s and early 2000s is just not there no more. Uh, a lot of players don't even play in the game. They opt out. So, um, yeah, I would love to see it see it go back to what it used to be, man. And, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, man. I think the venue helps. You know, everybody watches it. It's in Atlanta, so that's going to help. Um, but I don't know if I'm too excited to watch this. I'm more excited about watching the HBCU game, honestly, because I know that they're going to go out there and play basketball. They're going to actually try to beat each other in this game. So it's probably going to be competitive. Um, and I I don't know who's in the three-point contest. It's probably a bunch of big men. 
it's just <laughs> the product just is not the same as it used to be. <laughs> and like Brinsky said, this used to be like the all star game, like out of all of them, out of Major League Baseball, of course, Pro Bowl, we know what that's become, but out of all of them, NBA had the best all star weekend. Uh, David Stern did a great job there, and like you said, Adam Silver, he just I don't know what he's doing with that, man. He's just taking a great product, man, and and trying to do too much, I think. I don't know. But I don't know. I'll check it out, though. I mean, sports going to be on TV, so I'm going to watch it. Uh, And hopefully there's some entertaining moments in there. Yeah, man. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to, like I said, the Steph versus Sabrina um, three-point shootout. That's my all-time favorite player. So, you know, just seeing him light it up. All Star Weekend is great. I mean, it, I, I think it got a lot. It got kind of mundane with Steph being in three point shootout and Clay. So that's why they wanted some other people to get in there. And I don't know Trey's in there this year. Um, Carl Anthony Towns and uh, a couple other players. And so, <clears throat> you know, I think it'll be okay. that will be okay. Of course, I'm going to be going for Trey on the the uh, All Star Weekends in, in Indianapolis this year. Um, and like the last time, well. Georgia had the, the University of Georgia had good success in Indianapolis in the um, national championship a couple years ago. So, you know, but there's that. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know what I'm saying? I, um, I, I think it'll be better this year, East versus West. Uh, I'm glad they went back to it as well because that, that Le- Team LeBron versus Team Giannis, Team LeBron versus Team KD, Team LeBron versus that, 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 it was just, I didn't really like that format. And so going back to the regular format, you know, of course, the West, you know, they're loaded. Uh, they're they have just the better stars. We got Giannis. On, I'm an East guy because I'm a Hawk fan. So we got Giannis. We got, uh, you know, we got Trey, who's, who's an alternate. We got Jalen Brown. We got Jason Tatum. Um, and, um, you know, we got, we got some, you know, some pretty nice, pretty solid players. Uh, we we we, uh, we lost a couple because of injury, like Julius Randle and stuff like that. We got Jalen Bronson. Who's really uh, stepped up, and so I think it'll be a pretty good All Star game um, that might potentially come down to the wire. And a lot of the reason too that we've seen the lack of defense is because they're so scared of somebody getting hurt because of the injuries that the NBA has experienced the last three, four years, the low management stuff with Kawhi Leonard, and um, you know, since some of these other players, it just got you know, player, you know. Fans got tired of it, and so that's why they don't play defense like that. It's because they're trying to prevent injury. They don't play defense to the fourth quarter. But it's like at least give us two quarters of defense, at least, you know, to make the game more formidable and just more entertaining and fun to watch. Um, and and so if and so if it gives us that, I think it, it, it it'll be you know better than the the um, games that we've seen in prior years. And don't make it this little. The, the first to 250 wins or something like that. No, for 12 minute quarters all the way through where there's a buzzer. Not, uh, for, you know, I didn't like I didn't like that format. So, let's yeah. get back old school, man. I was just about to ask if they kept that format or not. If it's just I hope they don't, game. bro. That no, format I think shit. I think you went back to just like we just playing the game. And the thing that I was gonna say, and I'm glad you said that, Josh. Like, dog, y'all worried about if, – if that's the case, they worried about getting injured. I have watched the All-Star game every year since I can remember. I have never remembered anybody getting hurt. Nobody. You know you you know how folks get hurt? Because they worried about getting hurt. Just yeah. play the game. That's all you got to do. not the NFL. Like, you start to try to play too careful, that's when you get hurt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But That's hey, true. man, what do I know? But they, I'm like, bro, low management. That's why I, the only. Let me just give Adam Silver this credit. The only thing I give him credit for is you can't make no All NBA team and none of this. You got to play at least 65 games because the load management thing was getting out of hand. Cause I'm like, bro, what if I want to go to a game and I can only go to one game a year? And i like, oh man, um, just say Steph for anybody. And I go to the game, they sit down. 
and I didn't spend all this money on the ticket, and they ain't even playing. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like I got cheated. I don't even care about the game for real, for real. I didn't want to see the person I really wanted to see play. So I'm glad they changed that up because that was ruining the product. David Stern was rolling in his grave by all these moves that Adam Silver. I was arguing with Arlon about this, and he think that he say that. Uh, sorry for throwing you under the bus, Arlon, but he was saying that uh, Adam Silver uh, brought the lead more money. I was like, the lead was heading in that direction anyway. Mm -hmm. No lead just don't. The that's lead, just because there's more money available. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Lead, the lead's gonna always keep going up. I have yet to see a lead go down. Mm -hmm. Is the money gonna always go up? So I, that's why I never gave him that type of credit because David Stern mm -hmm. put made this game global. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's mm -hmm. all David Stern, his vision. Mm -hmm. But Adam Silver just. He got to do better, man. I, I can't even give him nothing on his legacy right now besides that. And that's, like, sad that you even got to make that a thing, pause, for uh, guys to just play 65 games. If that's your legacy, that is, that's not one I want to have as a commissioner of the NBA. But I think I got, got, got the NBA mixed up with the NFL. Like he, he, I don't know what he's what he's thinking. You you, you remember? Hey, do y'all remember when Sean Taylor killed that punter in the Pro Bowl? Yeah, in the, in yep. the Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yep. But but hey mm -hmm. hey, not to get off topic, whose injury? I mean, whose career got derailed in the Pro Bowl that one year? I cannot remember who it was, but his his whole career went downhill. He he had a major yeah, I injury. Was, mm, yeah, I, I, can't I, I can't remember, but. But this not the NFL, man. This is the NBA. Let's mm -hmm. have some fun, man. Bring it back to them days where we were Kobe, the 2000s. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, bring it back, man. I'm we, like, bro, y'all do. They, they talking about worrying about getting hurt, but they playing pickup ball in the summer. Mm -hmm. They playing mm -hmm. in the playing pick up. crossover. Yeah. They playing in the Drew League. Yeah. Like, are we being for real, bro? They going hard. Like, They're going they, hard in they, the Drew League. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not the Brenna. They're the really playing basketball, ball, bro. The brand of basketball isn't even that physical no more. Like mm -hmm. to be working. That's what I'm like saying, it. man. Come on, <laughs> it's like it's open right. court, bro. That's why I'm like, bro. We need. They used to punch people. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. This game, like, man, it don't happen no more. God, God bless them, man. That's what I'm saying, bro. Some of these, some of these guys, bro. The game. That's why, I was like, when you look at the points, and this is. And this is what I was uh, trying to make the argument with you guys in a lot of ways when it came to Tom and uh, Pat. The game is played different. Just because you see guys score more points don't mean that these guys are better than these guys. I don't think uh, James Harden is nowhere near Tracy McGrady's level. Nowhere near his level. I don't even see him as an A on AI level. Kobe, well, of course, he ain't on Kobe or uh, Jordan level. That's a whole nother level. I got a question for you, though, B. Go ahead. So, so check this on the on the Brady Mahone thing, right? Who you think would be more successful on a on a different team if they had to switch teams up? You think Brady would have been more successful playing for a Jaguars back in the day, or you know, uh, the Cleveland Browns, or, or do you think? Pat Mahomes would be more successful on a different team. If he didn't have the team he has now, if we put him in the worst, let's say we put Brady on the line. No, I can't even. Let's I, say I, we put Brady. I, I, I have to see. I had to see. Hold on, because we I ain't even trying to go If we put Brady on the way. worst team in his era, and we put Mahomes in the worst team in this era, who would be more successful? I have to say Tom, because I've seen Tom outside of Belichick. I haven't I seen so. I, I haven't seen Pat outside of Andy Reid. Yeah, but he went to a really good team in that Tampa Bay squad. He had weapons. Mm -hmm. I'm saying mm -hmm. that put them on. Yeah, it was really good. The mm -hmm. sorriest teams in the era. But, but why was that team good? What Tampa? Yeah, it was sprinkled with 
some of his guys. The only reason that team, that same team you're talking about, didn't make the playoffs the year before. That man, that man went over there and he brought Gronk with him and he got mm-hmm. heavy on that Gronk team. wasn't Gronk mm-hmm. no more, man. Gronk, is, Gronk well, he was brought the Gronk name. off the couch. Yeah. Yep. Off the couch. <laughs> listen what I'm listen what you're saying. Grunt one grunt. I get what you're saying. But what I'm saying is that, that Tampa Bay team is a little bit different. What I'm saying is if we took Tom, put Tom on the worst team in his era, and then we put Pat in the worst team in this era. Who do you think? Let, let's say we put Brady on the Cleveland Browns from that era, and then we put Mahomes on the on the Panthers. Who would be more successful? I think Pat. I said I don't know. Yeah. All I all Pat. I can go off is uh go off Tom Brady because I've seen him do it without Belichick. I have not seen Pat Mahomes do it. Really good squad. Yeah, he had a really good squad. He had a lot of weapons he had a really and a good defense. Tampa Bay team was awesome, man. Yeah, that was good. I, that I team think team like that year was good. This. I don't know how we made it back to football. <laughs> I'm, just gonna ask, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna. I'm just. I'm just gonna uh, just put this out there. And then I'm gonna leave it alone. Tell me three guys on that offense, the three best guys that you can think of that Tom Brady had on them off on them three, the first three Super Bowls in New England. Give me the three best. Yeah, Patty Corey Dillon. Corey Dillon. Branch. Branch. Mm-hmm. Come on, give me one more. You said three guys. I said Dylan just three Branch. guys. Is it? I'm, I'm getting you. Listen, what you just said. Yeah, that's that's what I said. How many of those guys going to the Hall of Fame? Those are the three best guys you're giving me. That's I give you Tyreek Hill and I give you Travis Kelsey. Okay, all those guys going without, to the Hall of Fame. Okay, but with this Super Bowl, no, 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 and no, the last no. Super Bowl before that, he didn't need none of that. Has any of these players been better than Tyreek Hill ever? Has any of these guys ever been better than Travis Kelsey ever? The answer is no. No. End of discussion. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just saying, man. We know. But hold on, man. Yeah, we talking about basketball. We y'all, we we we'll we talk <laughs> about that bull <laughs> job next week. I don't even know how y'all let me down here. How long I was saying, we uh, hold on, hold on. We'll, we'll talk about that next week. I don't want to talk about football. Yeah. We'll next, the next whole time. thing of what I was talking about with basketball, dog, is just because you see a lot of guys score points. And and that's this is why I, like, I hate having arguments with certain dudes when they talk about basketball, because basketball is my favorite sport. And I see dudes talk about basketball, and you can tell that they have zero knowledge about basketball. <laughs> They would think that certain guys can, bro. I have yet to see. Okay, you put. Let's give me, y'all. Uh, I'll just say this before we move on. Who is y'all? Because uh, uh, I don't even know how I want to ask. <laughs> Who is y'all best shooting guard right now? That's that's in, that's a great argument. In the NBA right now. Devin Booker. Book. Where would you rank would. Devin Booker? Devin Booker among Ray Allen, Kobe Bryant, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, all in their prime. No, no, he's not. He's not close. Yeah, he's, not, yeah. he's not close. And they and guess what? All of them played at the same time in their prime. Right. And Devin Booker is at the bottom. The best that this era can give me is the small four position with LeBron. I wouldn't even say that with LeBron and them because they low key kind of their era. But I would just say since they're still playing, I would give these guys that power for ever is no. Who is the best power for you can give me? Probably Giannis. Mm, yeah, you probably ever? put Giannis there. Are we talking ever now? or just right now? No, I'm just talking about compared now to like the <clears throat> early 2000 guys. Because the depth on the 2000 guys. 2000, around 2000, 2005. Like, bro, the death on the power forward is just that was ridiculous. That was, that was you also. Got AD, you, you got Julius. Greatest. You got. You said uh, Julius Randle? Hey, man, yeah, we got to stop shitting on Julius on the podcast. Man. Would you take Would you take Julius Randle over Tim Duncan? Would you take Julius Randle over Kevin Garnett? No. Would you take Julius Randle over Chris Webber? Would you take Julius Randle over Dirk Nowinski? 
Look how many names I can name off the top of my head. Chris, you know what? You know what? The first name, and that's the first. Name, and that's the first no, the second name that you mentioned of Power Ford. <laughs> Why don't you like Julius? Man? I didn't say I didn't like Julius. I'm saying just because a guy puts up points, that doesn't yeah. mean he is necessarily better than somebody. <laughs> just so because he, we're playing an error because they don't play defense. Yeah. It's easy to score 135 points a game now. Here's, here's, the, here's the thing about those errors, too, is like the points aren't created equal. So if you look at a Kobe Bryant 40-point game, right, they were scoring like 90 points on average back then. So if I got 40 points, the rest of the team got 50. That's a lot more weight than if they put up 135 points and I got a 40 pack. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It, it, there is room for players now. You can think about it. You can watch a game and you can see three players go for 40 mm-hmm. on one team. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's happened before. Mm-hmm. That's unheard you think of Chris Webber is better than uh Cat? Who's more talented? Chris Webber is better than no, Cat. that's a different question. Cat 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 is more talented, but Chris Webber is better. Yeah, I think Chris Webber is you talk, you're talking about talent. Mm-hmm. I don't and know. And that's two man. different I positions. Think, I, I think is a T Webb is a little little overrated in this in this topic, man. I like to well. You should watch. And Cat is, Cat is not even Cat is not even a center. I mean, a power four. He's a center. He's more of a power four than a center, though. We don't go bear play. We don't go bear play as okay. a center. Okay, give me, give me your four bits. You you say Cat is one of the best big men. Listen, listen no, no, I'm talking about he's one of the best power fours in the league. <laughs> Yes, in the league you right now, he's yes, the best. Yes, 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 yes. Right now, he's better than Tim Duncan. Is he better than KG? Is he no, better than right now? Listen to what I'm saying. You said right now in this league, right now. Yes, and I'm close, and, and I'm coming back in that argument he's with not those players. Than Tim Duncan, no. You can't. But that's what I'm saying. I'm going. To, I'm. I'm literally comparing those. I'm going back and forth to those errors. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying right there. That they they don't even yes. measure up to these guys. They're if these guys play, from those the, the, they're powerful K- from that era. Oh, go ahead. Go bro, ahead my bad. Oh no, 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 I was saying if KG played in this game today, bro, it would be, yeah, it would be game. criminal for him yeah. to play in this game. Yeah, Prime. You could, and you talking you about you can't, you can't put your hands on him. You couldn't okay. put Prime. You couldn't put Prime David West in this league. I don't know if you remember <laughs> Prime. You David can't even remember that. Paul. Oh my God! <laughs> put put prime put prime. You think Jokerify? Put prime Hakeem Olajuwon in this era, and let's see how many triple doubles you see. Oh come on, this this Hakeem the so, dream. So it's only so far you can go now. You can oh, only man. go back to like maybe two thousand and nineties. Any further than that, the athleticism across the league just plummets. Like you look them highlights, yeah. it's just people just standing up. So I, I wouldn't I, say I it plummets. I, I feel like you, the defense. I give you more athletic people. My fault. Go ahead. I was just saying, no, I feel like the defense got yeah. worse. Yeah, well, defense saying, is like if, you, if you look at some highlights from the 80s, you got a couple players in there that were balling, and then the rest of them were just out there. Like, if you look at those highlights, and then you look at the players now, it's like, I don't see why people think that, like, the players from the 80s would be able to compete with these players that we have now. Now, you can no, go back nobody to the would 2000s. See Magic Johnson. Nobody would see Magic Johnson in this. Do you game. think? Do you think? Uh, yeah. Do you think Rodman could play in this era? Because that was an argument mm-hmm. that that. Uh, I think Rodman can play in this era. Had with yeah. Paul Pierce. I think Rodman can play in this era. Without going no more positions, without relatively yes. scoring no points and playing straight defense, you think he can make it in this era? Yeah, Draymond. Yes. Yeah. I was about to say that's what Draymond yeah. is basically doing. Draymond is doing better. Draymond is scoring over over. 15 points. Come on, man. No, Draymond no, Green not. is not. No, he not. is Mr. No. Triple Single for a reason. Yeah. He is Mr. Triple Single for a reason. He might give you 10 points. <laughs> if that. Well, we're and talking about what? Rodman who will relatively not score any points. And, he's straight and guess what? Straight and guess what? He'd probably give you like 21 rebounds, mm-hmm. eat about five blocks, and lock down your best player. Dennis, mm-hmm. Dennis Rodman in this area is a championship level piece to a team. Yeah. When you say yeah. my big man doesn't have to worry about getting rebounds and I can just just put him next to Embiid and mm-hmm. say, Embiid, you don't even have to get no rebounds. You don't have to box out. None of that. Just <laughs> go to work. Right to the elbow and go to work. 
Go to work. I'm telling you. I, I got a, I got a, a Rodman jersey hanging up. I, I, I rock with Rodman, man. I don't know player. if that would relatively – I don't know if that would translate. Bro, it's a reason why – before we move on, it's a reason why when folks think it's like asinine, when – and Shannon Sharp used to do this. He don't do this no more in his uh, interviews. He used to ask the NBA player, how many points do you think uh, Michael Jordan was scoring this year? And every last one of them, probably like 50. Mm-hmm. In this era, he, they're not saying these are guys that are playing. He wanted somebody to say something different. Yeah. But but they can't. Bro, they played against this man. They seen this man with their own eyes, and they see what the league at right now. You can't touch him? Yeah. The man was already averaging – over 30 points a game, career yeah. average. Now you off put him in off <laughs> two pointers. Like, bro, that's one thing they don't talk about enough. Like, bro, this man look the most insane stat that I have heard from this man. The man scored three thousand points. He's the last player to score three thousand points in a season, and he probably took made 15, maybe, maybe 15 threes. Yeah. Maybe That's- 15. That is incredible. James Harden that one year when he was scoring probably took like 300 or 400 threes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was going man. crazy. Man. He was going and crazy. his illegal defense back then too. Like it was, was going crazy. It was different. Bro. But Jordan is what it, is one of the prime examples is like, you know, Back in the nineties, they were scoring 85, 89 points a game. This man had fifty packs. So if I got fifty, we got eighty five on the board. You clearly the best player on this team. You know what I mean? You put um, your best bit man in this air against those guys, and boy, MB would be so tired of Shaq. I'm gonna say it, it just, but, but, it just but, matters where you put Shaq. Do you put Shaq with old school or new school? When people ask you to matter. compare him, it's like where you put Shaq. That's a I very look, important look. question. <laughs> okay, look at look at okay. Let's go there. Yeah, after quick, we got to move on. Real quick, but let's go. Go there ahead, go ahead. Quick, let's name the top five center Shaq played against in his in his career. Right, Hakeem Olajuwon, okay. David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, yep, David Robinson, yep, mm-hmm. Patrick Ewing. Yeah. David Robinson. Okay. Who else? And, and that was mm-hmm. early in his career. That was super early in his career, right? But he Shaq played for a very long crying. time, right? So let's say in the middle of his career, Yao let's say when he got to Miami. Yao when he Ming, got to Miami. The White. Yeah. White. And who else? Yeah. That's all I'm giving you right now, because that's all I can think of. What what point are you trying to make? Point I'm trying to make, right? Outside of super early in his career, right? <clears throat> Most of them guys are on the on the back end of their careers, like Hakeem. Hakeem was definitely not no, on no, the no. back end I mean, of his he played, career. He played, he played, he played against Hakeem in the, in, the, in his championship or whatever like that. But I'm saying, bro, he lasted so long in the league, bro. Where Shaq started, he came into this era with the with the whites and cats like that. You know what I'm saying? All I'm saying is, bro. Shaq dominated the league for so freaking long, dog. And I feel like he was, like, one of the best, like, one of the greatest. But would that translate into today's game? Would Prime yeah. yes. translate into today's game? Are you, Y'all really think are you that would translate real? into today's game? So you, you think Who's going to guard him? him? <laughs> Who's going to guard him? Joel Embiid, no. Jokic, no. <laughs> He ran the never, floor, rim to rim. Wimby, no. I don't, I don't he would abuse Wimby. Some of these guys can shoot, though. Who cares if shot. you can shoot? Who cares if you can shoot? I can put somebody on you. Can you stop this beast down there? You're probably going to get in foul trouble. Matter of fact, you ain't got to guard him. Who's going to guard him? <clears throat> so you ain't going to be in foul trouble. They're going to be in foul trouble because they can't stop this man. Wimby will get abused. I don't oh, no, care he, about you they, being this tough they wouldn't. They wouldn't put Wimby on Shaq, man. Talking about guarding him. You will see ESPN <laughs> highlights. That man probably in this era, and you can't touch him. Come on, man. This this, this ain't even. I'm. God bless. Shout out to NBA All Star Weekend. We got to move on. <laughs> All right.
Yeah, because uh, boy, we can get on about some basketball, but we <laughs> we about to pick it up anyway, because of course football season is over. But um, uh, the beasts, <laughs> all beasts, and it is a short term beef <laughs> or whatnot. So I ain't gonna really too much talk about it for real. But good old Mike Epps and Shannon Shaw. So we all know the Cat Williams interview was a big interview. Uh, uh, Mike Epps was talking about uh, the uh, coming up on Club Shay Shay. But it, it was just like a stand-up routine. And that got linked out. And, of course, Shannon Sharp seen it, got upset. He can say he doesn't care about being called gay. But, bro, if you a man and you're not gay, that's going to bother you if folks just keep calling you something that you're not or whatnot. So I think uh, Mike Epps' uh, jokes offended him a lot. And the thing I had a problem with is that these guys can come on your show and say whatever they want. But these guys can't defend themselves. It ain't like uh cat said anything bad about Mike Epps or nothing like that. Cause they cool or whatnot. But what Mike said is that Shannon was trying to feed Cat. Yeah, feed Cat and try to get him to say something. And I think that's lame. And Shannon would have to admit that's lame. So of course that man gonna come at you a little bit now. You can't you can't get mad at that because you low key trying to start some. But what's y'all thoughts on just just something quickly before we get on the last topic? No, oh, I go ahead. Uh, man, uh, Dennis Shaw I think is starting to suffer from. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but um, so you know he was on Fox, right? And now he's up with Stephen A, right? And mm-hmm. we know that ESPN is owned by Disney, right? So a lot of times on the sports shows, they push these narratives, and they're always trying to fish to find stuff. And I think – um that's what you see a lot with Shannon Sharp now. Like, because before that, his podcast wasn't about exposing people or just all of the drama that's been included in it recently. Reason why Shannon Sharp can't be mad is like you opened up the door. Like, if you're going to put somebody on your podcast, it's going to mm-hmm. talk about everybody in the industry and you're going to put out that interview. And you're going to mention Mike Epps' name, even though he didn't say nothing bad, but even though, like, once you bring up my name, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like when somebody on the phone, and then they on the phone next to you, and then they call your name out, and you be like, well, who is that? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, who all over there? Like, it's the same thing. It's like, man, once you mention his name, it's fair game. And like he said, man, he didn't say, it's, it's part of a, a comedy routine, like, this wasn't on his HBO special or a Netflix special. He didn't get up there and say that. Like, this is, you know, something. Even if he did, it ain't like he just went on the yeah. internet and did it. Yeah, this is crazy, man. And for him to get in his feelings about it like that, it's like, man, you're going to pull up on Mike Epps because he made a joke about you. It, it, the funny thing is, like, the Shannon Shaw that, that we all kind of know and love, he would combat, combat, skip about these same things. <laughs> Like, these same topics, he would just go in on Skip about, like, hey, you can't be mad. You mentioned somebody's name, and they come back at you like that. And, like, now to see him just being sensitive about it, man, you can kind of tell that that brand is getting to his head. Like, it's, it's, he, he's trying to protect that brand and that image now, which he didn't have before when he was just on with the Black and Miles. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, uh, man, it's unfortunate to see, honestly, because I just don't think – one thing you don't do is heckle a comedian, like – to be honest, he didn't he didn't go in on you like I know Mike Epps can. And, and he can. <laughs> yeah. If this doesn't settle, they don't settle this, man. It could get worse. Cause now you have somebody who's a comedian with a platform and a microphone that is, you know, clever. And and all you have on your podcast to say to him is threats 
It's like, come on, man. It, it, it was kind of lame on Shannon's part, man. Yeah, Me man. With you. I thought so. <laughs> yeah, I think we all think that. Well, I can't speak for everybody. So go ahead, Joe. Yeah, man, I was just reading a little bit up on it myself because I didn't know a whole lot about it uh, until I saw Shannon. I, I follow Shannon Sharp on Instagram. And I saw him talk about it a little bit um, <clears throat> earlier, but but yeah, I oh, mean, oh, oh. My yeah, so, yeah, love love Shannon, man from 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 Savannah, um, Georgia. So he's a he's a Georgia native, but um, I think he Shannon has what I've noticed, especially the last couple of years. He's all, he's had this habit of getting into riffs with. Um, other people who who may be famous or who may be seen in the media a lot, like John Morant's dad. He got into that riff with him at the Lakers game last year, and he had to go on social media and apologize for his actions. Um, so he's always been, you know, confrontational with a lot of these celebrities or a lot of these people who are famous because, um, <clears throat> because, you know, that's just who he is. He's a, he's a football player and he's a Hall of Famer at that. And the way he grew up, you know, he grew up, you know, on, on a farm in, in Savannah, Georgia, in, in rural South uh, Georgia. And, you know, he was really country and things like that. And he was bullied because of his speech impediment. And so that made him very confrontational as he got older. So when somebody talks about him, behind his back like that or, or, or makes a joke about his speech impediment or there was one time where he was wearing makeup on first take and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he's going to take offense to that. And so it's not surprising that he wants to get back at my Epps and, and expose him in any type of DM because that's just who Shannon is. Um, Now, you know, I, you know, it would definitely be entertaining to see Mike Epps actually come on his uh podcast and um, you know, they have that con- they have that conversation or they have that debate. Um, I think that would definitely that might get more views than Cat Williams did. Um, but I mean, he's Sh- Shannon. He he's professional. He has like two sides. He he got the professional side of him. He got down from South Georgia, uh, rural South Georgia. I used to get bullied. I'm, a, I'm a, you know I'm still a tough guy at at heart. And so if you come at me sideways, you know I'm black. And so here it comes. And so, you know, he has he has that that side of him as well. So I'm hoping he doesn't expose that too much. You know, I'm hoping they don't become too huge and now deter people from come, wanting to come on the show because I've loved his interviews. I watched his Monique one. I watched his Usher one. I watched his Cat Williams one. I watched uh, several of the interviews that he's had. Um, but, you know, you know, I mean, it, it, it was funny. The joke was funny, you know, him saying that, you know, if I were to come on the show, he would be looking at my private part and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that part, that part was funny. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, Club Shay Shay, he trying to tell you something now that he gay. Not, like, I mean, I obviously the, I, the guy's far from gay. Um, but, uh, but I mean, it, it, it was funny, but it was like uncalled for me by Mike Epps because it's like, what did Shannon do to you? He mentioned think, his name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think Shay uh Shay's gay or whatever. You know, I don't like really nah. going into that topic. Has he been doing some zesty shit lately? Yeah. I, I don't know what no man do behind man, hey, man, man, no. some zesty yeah. shit, bro. I don't know. Uh, I, I mean, don't know. It's, been, it's been getting pointed out. I mean, it's just obvious. He's been doing some zesty shit. Like, I mean, come on, bro. Like, you 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 Shannon Shot. Why why is you with this uh your, your style is on the court side every game, bro. Like, come on, dog. Like, and, and, and your, look, yeah, okay. Yeah, leave that alone. Leave that. <laughs> the jokes is the jokes. Mike, Mike Epps. <laughs> look, if you load somebody up with the ammo, to come shoot you down. What you expect? Yeah, I mean, the jokes are there, bro. The jokes, the jokes are there, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like Shannon. You know what I mean? Shannon, Shannon been doing some zesty shit lately, bro. Like I, I am, I'm not gonna be oblivious to it, but you know, it was all fun and jokes, man. I feel like, uh, I feel like Mike, man. Mike is doing what he do. He's a comedian, man. Uh, Mike. A lot of people are saying Mike wasn't getting that, uh, that shine and recognition that you know some of these other comedians was getting. So that's why he came out uh, and, and bombed on a lot of these cats. And that's why he came at Shay the way that he came at Shay. 
Uh, but uh, I'm going to I, – I cannot wait to see these two guys get in front of each other and actually hold that conversation. You know what I'm saying? And I do think Shannon took a lot of that stuff personal. This is a comedian, bro. This is one of the best comedians, uh, you know, in our generation. And uh, you can't take all that so personal, bro. Like, I, he, he felt like it was more of a personal attack, and he talking, he want to fight this man and all that. It was just crazy how Shannon was talking the other day, man. But uh, that's what social media does. Um, I can't, I'm glad that uh, Shannon Sharp <laughs> able to bring it back home and apologize for you know some of the things he was saying about Mike and how he want what he wants to do to Mike and all this stuff like that. Because honestly it didn't, it didn't have to go that far. But uh it, it's gonna be very interesting to see these two guys get in front of each other and uh and talk their differences out. <coughs> and, yeah. yeah. The, the whole the thing game. dog that uh what Shannon can't really get Mad about bro, I tell you, like bro, you mentioned the man's name or whatnot, and trying to uh, get somebody cat to uh, make him uh, say something about him and all that. But the thing is, like you literally that All Star game is literally in this man's hometown. Tell about I'm coming to the All Star game, I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna see you or whatnot. I don't care who you are. I don't care how tough you are. You do not say you, if you think you about to go into another man's hometown and do whatever you think and think you're gonna do what you think you're gonna do. Good luck. Hey, I don't Mike, care who you man. Mike, Mike, a real gang member, man. You, you can't play with that man. Dog. Good luck. That's the only thing I'm gonna tell you. Good luck. Okay. Good luck you making think, it out of Indianapolis, but India is not bring, the you want to play with. Like I said, I don't care where who you are and where you from. If you think you about to go into anybody's hometown and think you're going to do something to that person, especially if they're a famous person, good luck. I would the love to see that. that does a lot in this community at that. <laughs> a lot. Uh, Mike, Mike Epps has done a lot mm. in his community. Made a lot what? of uh, – he just built a community, uh, affordable housing community in his city, in his yeah. hometown, on his, uh, <laughs> on his block. You know what I'm saying? He's doing a lot of positive things in this community. He's got a lot of love up there in Indianapolis, man. And uh, I mean, Indiana. But you you got to watch. You got to really watch that, man. You can't be speaking that reckless, man, when it comes to cats like that, dude. And yeah, I man. think Shannon kind of got a little beside himself, you, bro. You can't, you can't invite it, though, man. Like, you got to understand that you just did a podcast with Cat Williams, and he's talking about almost every single comedian in the game right now. Like, of course, a comedian is gonna have something to say about you because you invited it. You, you, you did the interview. You were sitting, you were sitting on there laughing and joking with him. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, man, I see people do it on social media all the time. They post something and then invite other people to it. And then when the other person get there, it's like, oh no, this is my post. This is my, like, it's like, yeah, man, the stupid man. Stupid. Like, yeah, you, you inviting it's this, you inviting these issues, man. It's just like you uh, telling something like, oh, man, this person doing this in my house or whatnot. Then when I give you my opinion on it, you be like, mind your business. You invite it. Once you put it out there like that, you, it's pretty much everybody business. Now, once you put it out there, because you put it out there. The thing like, is, you gotta uh, think, go you ahead, go ahead. When Cam Newton interviewed Charles and White? Yeah. Cam Newton got some jokes about it. It wasn't from any famous people, but they was joking on his outfits and stuff like that. Like, and you got to know when you interview somebody and you get on that big stage, right? This is what millions of views that this guy and whatever type of energy it is, it's going to, you're going to be involved in it, man. And he just, I don't know what, what he thought was going to happen. He lucky it's just Mike Epps. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but the thing is that, that really got me dog was when I didn't even see the full, like the full, full video. So forgive me on this. But I just remember it was something that just came out. I think it happened last night. He was like, like, why do, why when certain people like in our community elevate, <clears throat> folks want to pull them down or whatnot? And what I seen in the comments, I, I immediately turned it off because I got pissed off by it. <laughs> I was like, 
Did you say that to Monique and Cat Williams when they were doing that? Mm -hmm. These are certain people that were talking on certain people. Now I don't know these your situation with these people. Why are you why you didn't question that then? But since yeah. it's happening to you, you want to be yeah. like, oh, why we got to be crabs in the barrel and all that stuff? I'm like, nah, bro. like, listen here. Especially any if, if somebody's speaking on your name is, and especially if it's not true. I'm going to say something mm -hmm. just because somebody say, and, and this is the thing that I hate the most. And I want to be extremely clear on this. When somebody say, well, everybody's saying it. Oh, it must be true. I thought that was always a stupid statement. Everybody, it can be 50 people say two plus two equals five. Don't mean it's real mm -hmm. or whatnot. What is it? The, and then mm -hmm. is his true, her true, bro. It's only one straight line and my daddy used to tell me this it ain't no size it's just the truth mm -hmm. anything else that you try to add in that's where the lie is that's where you get that his truth and her truth you add and you sprinkle in them lies on top of the truth what is the truth of the matter and so mm. Shannon got I don't like how it's just like it's turning into like Wendy Williams and stuff yeah. like that and mm. like bro we can, we can talk about something but it's like you fishing for something, like you fishing for something, and I don't like that about you. I like, bro, you do dope content, and you don't need to do that. But if that's that's the role you want to go down, you got to expect the other side to get on you, and they're going to get on you. I don't care how funny you think you are; these are comedians. They do this for a living. They will destroy you. I learned a long time ago. Like, bro, if a comedian getting on me, I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to have to just go in. Because I, I can't out funny you. <laughs> like, bro, you would destroy me. You would hurt my self-esteem. I'm just like, yeah, I get I may be hurting on the inside, but I'm trying to get you off me, <laughs> Pauls, as quick as possible, bro. But, yeah, yeah man. Shannon it's sad, it. man. Like, like I said, he, this is some of the same exact things that he would just go back and forth with Skip Bayless about. Just mentioning people's names and just the mess, the mess of the whole show. Like, he was totally against that on Fox. And that's why people probably fell in love with him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But but now it's just like, I don't know. He, he just want to perpetuate it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's different. Controversy sells, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it won him over. He got his biggest interview with uh, Cap, uh, Cat Williams. Biggest mm -hmm. interview ever. Uh, the numbers went crazy, and he's trying to stick to that formula right now. But, but like we said, man, you yeah. can't out funny a comedian, bro. When you playing with these comedians, bro, they will hurt your feelings, and his feelings there's definitely no, got hurt. There's no there's longevity the thing, in that formula, man. Yeah, and the thing you ain't gonna win. The <laughs> thing is, with when it comes to that, like, bro, the Cat Williams interview was cool, but I like the Country Wayne uh, interview a lot better than now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you don't have to, you didn't have to do that. Country Wayne literally, the closest thing that thing came to controversy was Jess Hilarious and talking about um, he was like, bro, she need to if we broke up like five years ago. If they still asking Jess Hilarious about me, she gotta get some more business going on or something. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta get some because they keep mentioning my name. Before they mention your name, they're gonna probably talk about 20 things I'm doing before they even get to your name. And mm -hmm. I feel like Shannon, like bro, you a good interviewer and stuff like that. I just don't want to just be always messy every time somebody get up there. That's my only thing. Because right. it's just like right. what are we looking for? Every time, because every time we expect to see somebody, I expect it more need to come up there and be say the same stuff about Tyler Perry, about the same stuff about Oprah Winfrey. And the thing that I absolutely hated is when she came at DL because I was like, you saying that he had, they played this uh, would you rather game. Yeah, I thought it was weird, but he he didn't, he never uh, posted that or whatnot like this. Look, would, would you do whatever with somebody and you didn't like it? He didn't, he never put that out. They sent a cease and desist. Yeah, no, she say that. That's what she say. That he said that ain't even that wasn't even called. We had a conversation, and he said I just took it down. 
because I got respect for you. And the simple thing, but the thing is, when she had a problem with some headline and stuff, she mentioned that this man child getting uh touched on by one of his friends or whatnot. When they got past it, why are you mentioning this man's child and stuff like that? You ain't nothing. Like it took the controversy behind that for her to apologize about that. Cause I'm telling you right now, if Monique was a man, yeah, we'll have he would be like, I'm gonna see you. And when I see you, it ain't gonna be pretty because I guarantee you, bro, if I was in that position, I would come. It, I, I pray to God I never even had the experience what that man had the experience. And we all fathers. And we had little girls and stuff like that. And somebody say something about our child like that. We may we may see red. I ain't gonna lie to you. Something like that. We may just see red. Ain't ain't no talking, especially coming out of a man's mouth. Like, bro, ain't no talking. Ain't nothing you can say to me. I'm sorry, I ain't gonna do it. But Shannon, sorry. please don't turn it. Don't turn. No, go ahead. I got a question for you. Do you think you think that cat could have went anywhere and did that interview? You think that was like the only platform that he could have went to and it got the same kind of buzz behind it? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't even know. To be honest, he, he if, not, if, yep. if, if he went, if he went to Gail or somebody, I don't think. I think just Shan, Shannon's a good interviewer. He's just like, bro. Yeah. He just we just having a conversation. And he makes True. it just feel comfortable for you just to talk. So it, it doesn't feel like drink champs. He could have went to drink champs. He went to drink champs. I don't think it would have the same. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, it would have had it would have definitely did numbers. It would have uh, did numbers. Did numbers. Shannon. He could have went to uh Cameron and uh and Mace and did something. Yeah, so and it would have did numbers. Stuff it like that, it would have done man. numbers on because you talk the, the people that you're talking about and you're naming them by name. And you breaking it, and you breaking it down like that. It's gonna do numbers because, of course, like the Haven said, controversy sell. Yeah. So, of course, it was gonna do that. But I just don't want the show to turn into no yeah. Wendy Williams type show. Like every interview, I expect somebody to just be messing, and then we just like, oh Lord, like, yeah. yeah, I ain't gonna sit here and act like I ain't like some of that. Like, bro, everybody like a little tea every now and then, like, ooh, like yeah. some stuff like that. But if it's just like, all right, but come on now. Now you just being messy at this point. It start becoming your brand, and it's like, oh. yeah, like come on. <laughs> like we, you can talk to these folks without talking about this other stuff. But hey, we'll see how far it go. He doing, he doing the damn thing with Ocho with Nightcap. Nightcap is just something I look forward to. Cause it's yeah. just some dope. Dude. They talk about certain things, and he tells certain stories about. Stuff in the past that we'll never get on TV or whatnot. So, mm. oh well. But we went over a lot of time tonight, so we ain't gonna be able to make it to that uh, last topic. But we'll I save for next week. But, but as always, go around the table, everybody. Uh, say you uh, Facebook. <laughs> Instagram, all that good stuff. Let the folks know where they can find you. Now I start with you, Jay. Yes, sir. You can find me on all social media platforms. Uh, Joshua Dennis. Uh, everything except for Twitter. Well, I don't have Twitter anymore. But uh, Joshua Dennis. Yes, sir. You can go ahead, Ted. No. That Ted's. See it right there, Frodo imagery. I don't know that's it's reverse. Frodo imagery uh, on all platforms. Uh, you can follow me. Um, also, uh, last time I was on here, we was talking about tailgate, right? So mm -hmm. we got like the tentative schedule now. Uh, I'll just I just go ahead and say it looks like we'll probably only be doing two this year, uh, but. For the fans of it, that means that we get to spend a lot more resources and time and energy in the homecoming. So uh, it should be pretty epic. But uh, yeah, look out for uh, itinerary for that coming soon once we get everything together. Can't wait for it, too. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, man. Yeah. You already know. Every week we do this. Do it big. It's your boy DJ Ghost Pedo. The boy Dave more, you know, from Skiggy and all that other stuff. You feel me? Hey, man. Mr. Controversy. Big shout out to the team again, man. Another hot one. You feel me? And we do this every week, man. Shout out to the Sharks through the podcast, man. You already know what's up. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brent Kishaw. Uh, uh, the great host. I think I'm a good host. I try to be, but I'm nothing without my guys. Appreciate all the guests and everybody that uh, show love to the podcast. Of course, we drop every Wednesday. Appreciate all the new subscribers. Like I said, we just hit 400 uh, last week on the road to 500 now. Um, yeah. big, big interviews coming up, and I got one in the bag. I'm not telling nobody. The only person that knows, and, and the only reason she knows because she's in the house, <laughs> and that's my wife, is one that I'm really, really working <laughs> on. Even the guy is gonna be really, really surprised by it. So, hopefully, I'll give you a hint, it just give, give you a hint on somebody. Hopefully. I can get them on before the NAACP or and that's me. So you can figure out who all on there if you want to, hopefully. And this just hopefully I can get them on here. But it's it's in the works and we'll see where we see what happens. But everybody make sure y'all follow these guys. My handle right there. That's my uh Twitter. And Instagram, just add a five, and that's that'd be my Instagram. But appreciate to everybody. Shout out to Arlon, shout out to Quint. Y'all both ugly. Just want to throw that out there. But y'all still my dog. Hopefully, we'll see them on next week. And hopefully, uh, these guys be on here next week because I probably got some topics for y'all next week. <laughs> and I, but it was in a very, very entertaining week. But as always, shout out to everybody. Shout out to my wife. Shout out to my baby. Justice. Uh, she about to be 11 months on Friday. Today is my mom's birthday. Shout out to mom. And shout out to uh, my cousin, <coughs> Brandon. DJ Parlay to a lot of folks. One of Ted's best friends. But... Uh, Appreciate all y'all, and as always, roll tight.